they looking for any type of bullshit that come out of your mouth. Mm. Your son, the best player I ever recruited. Get the fuck out of here. Mm. I had parents tell me that. Oh, this coach told me that. I told him, coach, get the fuck out of here. I'm like, your son ain't the best I recruited. Mm -mm. I want your son because I can see the future in him. I think he can be this. I could be wrong, but I think he can be this. So and you're just going in the house keeping it real with the parents. That, I mean, the the time of being real fits me perfectly because I have a hard time lying. And, and I would lose sleep over lying to a kid. Because you know why? I was that kid, man. Just eyes wide open. Tell me, coach, what can I do? Welcome to the Introspective Podcast, a series of insightful conversations where aspiring individuals reflect, engage, and share their journeys. For most of us, life is filled with hustling and bustling, but little to no time for stillness or to make sense of the winding roads that got us here. So tune in, because we're going to dig deep on what the pursuit of happiness really means and what often gets in the way of unlocking our greatness. Our next guest is a national award-winning collegiate football coach. So he graduated from University of Houston, go Cougs, found his way up to Baylor, over to West Virginia, and back to the University of Houston, uh, where he uses as a collegiate coach uh, the law of human nature and really helping to cultivate those athletes that are going to go pro and the 99% of the athletes who aren't going to go pro into successful, competitive, productive citizens. So what makes him inspiring? It was growing up impoverished in Sunnyside, Texas. And then one day realizing that he had qualified for the Olympic trials or he had broken all these records uh, at the University of Houston that stood for decades and having it all taken from him in the zenith of his career. In this episode, we're gonna talk about what it's like to be a collegiate athlete and a star collegiate athlete at that. We're gonna talk about how the NCAA names and images and likeness rule is gonna change the game forever. We're gonna talk about mental health, depression, and the importance of having a father or a role model in a young man's life. Listen, I'm excited about this episode. Y'all enjoy the show. Tyron Carrier. Oh, hi. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Tyron Carrier. What's up, man? Man, what's good, Con? Bro, welcome to the Introspective <laughs> Podcast, man. Tyron, I met you in 2007. Seven? Yeah. Okay. Man, all the way from Sunnyside, Texas. <sighs> right? All the way to U of H. That's like five minutes, but yes. All, <laughs> all right. Way. All right. All so way. Right down the street. Mm. Man, so Tyron, obviously, bro, you've had such an illustrious career mm. uh, just as a collegiate athlete, man, just as a father, dad, as a coach, you know, as a professional <clears throat> athlete, spent some time up in Canada. Bro, like, tell me about what it was like growing up in Sunnyside, Texas. You know what? What was that like? I mean, and, and just let you know for the folks who don't know where Sunnyside, Texas, at. All right, so uh, you got to go two eighty eight South, right? Uh, it's literally between sixteen and two eighty eight South, but you got to exit uh, Re Road, mm. uh, Belfort, mm-hmm. uh, all in that area, man. That's 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 where I grew up at. Okay, uh, I call it a, a little. It's like a, a cesspool. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Uh, I have. I, I, Going into that has such a negative connotation. No, it's, it's the truth. Oh, okay. it's the truth. Right. So look, there, there, there's, there's guys that are never make it out. Wow. Right? Okay. For instance, I went to the University of Houston. Yes, you did. My first time stepping foot on campus was when I was being recruited. Whoa. Exactly. Like it. When I tell people that, they be like, "What?" And you know, U of H is like literally five minutes yeah. up the street, yeah. I mean, down the road. So it is. And it's you know, uh, you know what I, I think about the kids that are that are on the other side of, of Scott Street too. Mm-hmm. And I always think, man, like if you are, and we'll talk about this a little later on. But you know, if you're over at CUNY Homes, man, you see all these buildings going up. I would just probably walk on campus, just infinitely curious. Oh, man, what's, what was going on over here? You remember that that kid used to be always, he always used to come uh, to our oh, practice. Oh, yeah. yeah. See, I would have yeah. been that kid. <laughs> I, I, me too. Me too. Okay. But I was, you know, I was <clears throat> I was programmed where you don't go. I mean, mm, uh, okay. you can go to Third Ward, but you can't step foot on the campus. Gotcha. You know, authority okay. will get you. Mm, um, okay. And that that was kind of like the rule that was in place? Yeah, I mean, that's how we was we was programmed as, as kids. 
Okay. Um, so. so so Sunnyside, Texas, man, not the easiest place to grow up, mm-hmm. right? When did you realize that you weren't going to stay there physically forever? Like, and what I mean, or well, physically and mentally, right? Because you can be you can be in LA and still be in Sunnyside here, mm-hmm. right? So when did you realize, man, I'm going to I'm going to get out of Sunnyside, and I, I want better for myself. Uh, it's a good question. I, I don't know when it. I I would say it hit me um, when I got the opportunity to to watch uh, Willow Ridge play. Okay. Uh, basketball. They basketball. Had, like, yes, they had TJ. I was a basketball guy, man. Whoa, whoa, whoa brother. Come on. Okay, bro, bro. First of all, don't, three, don't judge three, me. Three, over three thousand yards, over three thousand receiving yards, bro. You got NCAA records. Mm-hmm. You caught, you know, two or more passes in all fifty-three games of your career. You led the nation in kickoff returns with touchdowns, pump returns with touchdowns. At some point, bro, mm-hmm. you broke all kind of, you know, all kind of records. And you mean to tell me that you were a basketball guy? Look, I, I, my older brother. You know, we look up to our older brothers, right? Yeah. My older brother Don, he uh, he hooped. You know, okay. we got on our bikes and rode. To, we rode our bikes and went up to parks to hoop. Mm-hmm. So that was the first thing that I was doing. You know what I mean? So, but you know, it ain't it ain't really football. Ain't no different than hooping, bro. Okay. So listen, you, listen. Playing a receiver position. Yeah, you gonna have to make this make sense to me. So playing a receiver position, right? Mm-hmm. I love this. All right. So Hello. this is what I do now. All right, so <laughs> playing a receiver position. If I'm if I'm out recruiting, right, I mm-hmm. want to know where the other sport this kid play, and I'll be praying to be a basketball player mm-hmm. because the same way you cross somebody over is the same way you break out of the top of your cut. Same thing with a running back. Ooh, okay. So I'm going to tell you this, all right? So if you're running full tilt, and I say I want you to stick your foot in the ground and go the opposite way. Mm-hmm. Without right? tearing your ACL. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get to that. <laughs> All right, without tearing your ACL, okay? Okay. So I want you to run full tilt, stick your foot in the ground and go the opposite way. Mm-hmm. What hand and what foot would be up? If I'm... So you, I want you to cut left. What hand, what foot would be up? If you want me to cut left, mm-hmm. I, I got my left foot up. You gonna cut off the inside foot to go left? No, I'm gonna cut off my I'm cut off my outside foot. But so I'm saying like go. I'm gonna start with my left my left foot up. I'm looking this way, right? Ta-ta. Yeah. So at the top of your break when you're making that cut, which foot are you cutting off of? Right. Right. What hand? What, what where your where your right hand is? It's coming across. It's it's up also. Yeah. Right. You know who the answer is in basketball? Uh, Allen Iverson. Allen Iverson. Okay. He's known for doing what? Okay. Yeah. I Crossing see. people over. Yeah. So it's no different. Hmm. I slowed down like a ton of the, uh, a film of Jerry Rice, Chris Carter, Anquan Bowden, Larry Fitzgerald, and I'm watching these guys at the top of their routes. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, man, that's the same hand, same foot. Chad Johnson, same hand, same foot. I, I mean, we was, we actually was on a uh, team together in uh, CFL for the Alouettes. Hmm. Okay. So I'm watching them, and you know, Chad be like, it's my feet. I be like, bro, like stop. I know. I mean, we can we can go on YouTube and watch a guy tear some cones up, <laughs> right? And get on the field, and you be right. like, "Where did he go?" Right. So, go back to where we started at. Yeah, I started playing basketball first. What position? But, uh, point. Okay. Yeah, but what's funny is I was just hiding fifth grade. What? Just didn't grow no more. What? Yeah, it was uh, it was a little depressing. It did. A little depressing. <laughs> you know? So you just hiding fifth grade. Yeah. My anymore. brother, my brother, six two. Okay, and he played what position? He played small forward. Okay, so he played for Willow Ridge. No, he played for Worthen. So go back to what I was saying. Okay. So my uncle Tyrone, who I'm named after, um, took us to basketball games, right? Mm-hmm. So we we was like traveling around watching Willow Ridge play, uh, Bel Air, who had a Mecca Okafor, John Lucas. Okay, um, yeah. So we watching these teams play, you know what I mean? And, and I'm like, man, like, I want to be like that. Like, my uncle, like, I'm asking my uncle, I'm like, what I got to do to, you know, to be in that? He's like, you got to work. Yeah. I'm like, work? Work at what? He was like, your craft. So, during the process, like, I just, I developed a work ethic because I wanted to feel and be on that stage. Right. Not saying that I'm going to get out of my community. I didn't, I didn't, I couldn't see that for. Mm-hmm. It's just, I mean, when you grow up there, you can ask kids what they want to be from elementary They'll tell you something, you know, and when they get to middle school, they'll tell you something different. By the time they get to high school, they like, I mean, they get they get swallowed up in it. That's you know, insane, man. the dope boys is is the popular people in the in the hood. You know right. I mean? So 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 tell me about. Um, eventually, you realize that you were good 
the football, right? You realized that you were fast. Mm -hmm. At what point did you realize that you could both play football, you could run track, and did you see that it had an impact on the people around you in any way? Uh, I know for a fact, uh, I kind of counseled a lot of people out uh, as far as just what time I had. You talking about high school, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, just as far as what time I had, uh, I was I was literally like giving it everything I had. Okay. Um, I knew I knew for a fact I wasn't the smartest guy in the, in the room. You know, um, I knew for a fact my only way out was through sports, and I was gonna get it by any means. So I played everything. Okay, so basketball, mm-hmm. football, mm-hmm. track, baseball, baseball, mm-hmm. shortstop. A little short, a little pitcher. Pitcher? You hey, can't throw. I got a cannon on this show. You can't throw. Ask these receivers. Ask any one of the receivers that ever coach. We do ball drills. They'll be like, Coach, why are you throwing 90 miles an hour? Oh, okay. I see. I see. That's new. So, yeah. for a sport athlete, was there anything else? Were I you a swimmer there. by any chance? I can't swim. <laughs> you can't swim? I, mean, I sink You can do everything bottom. else. It's too much work. Yeah, I guess it is. I guess it is. Caleb Dressel, shout out Florida. Caleb Dressel, you know, the Olympics. It's the mm-hmm. Olympics right now. Mm-hmm. You didn't even know who that was. Did I did. You? Okay, you looked at me like yes. when I said Florida. But you surprised at the no? I'm su- I'm not surprised because anything Florida, Cun's gonna know. <laughs> that's true. Okay. That's true. Right. <laughs> that's true. Okay, so Will Ridge, uh, you're inspired by your brother. Well, so you were inspired by seeing him yeah. play in in that. Game. So my, my brother, no, no, no. My brother played in high school, mm-hmm. right? He was at Worthen High School. Yep. But when I was in middle school, me and my uncle would drive us around and follow Willow Ridge. Oh, right? okay, got you. So Are they like the best team. That's the time? best high school team. Better than Jack Yates in basketball. Yes. Oh wow. I know it's a lot of people. You know the the Jack Yates folk gonna be like, you out your mind, <laughs> right? Okay. But you know the the older guys, the older people, they know what Willow Ridge is. T.J. Ford, Daniel, and Carl Hood, um, Thompson. Like they had a they had a squad. I mean, all these guys went D one. Then you and went Duke. TJ went to Texas. Thomas went to Texas. So they they had a, a team, man. Okay, so you so you saw this growing up. Mm-hmm. You saw this team. You saw their work ethic, mm-hmm. and you looked at that, and you said, as a kid, uh, Sunnyside, Texas, I want that, and how I'm going to get it is through my work ethic, mm-hmm. right? No one had to tell you to go run routes. No one had to tell you to hit the track. Mm -hmm. No one had to tell you to not to be good at basketball. Um, You didn't catch that? (laughs) Not to be good at basketball. Uh, That's why I'm giving you this look. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. But no one had to tell you to go out and grind, right? I actually sucked at basketball. You did? I I knew it. I I knew it. I was so fast that I couldn't. But listen, in sixth grade, I was probably one of the top point guards in in the state. Really? Like. That's insane. I was too quick. I, I mean, honestly, bro, I can see that. I'm giving you a hard time, but with the speed. I was just too quick. I can see that. I can see that. You, so tell me about the recruiting process, right? You 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 said, hey, look, that's what I want to do. I'm going to get there. And your high, high school, you were obviously very successful with track and football, mm-hmm. right? Um, how did you, why did you decide to go to U of H? All right. So I want to I wanna say this before we get to that. Um, okay. I was told, um, to focus on one sport, right? Uh, I had I had other coaches tell me like, "Hey, man, if you want to be successful, you got to focus on something." Mm. And my uncle was like, "Well, hell no! For what? You only you only you only going to be in high school for four years. You could never get that back." Wow. So I'm like, and he's like, "Shit, son, play everything. Don't let no coach tell you what you're going to do, what you should do. Like, you got to live with that because." How many of us going went to college and said, "Man, I should have." I ain't had no regrets leaving high school. I I played everything. If, if it was pity pad, red light, green light, I was gonna play it. You know, <laughs> you what played saying? everything, everything. Okay. So, <clears throat> and I had fun. Okay. Uh, you know, most most importantly, I was always doing something. So, I you was asking me about the work ethic, right? Yeah. I had my uncle tell me, Tyrone, I don't want you getting up at five o'clock, jogging down the street. In a hoodie and everything. Mm, it's dangerous. Yeah. See, I didn't think dangerous. You know, I didn't. I didn't think dangerous. I thought, man, uncle, why are you trying to hold me back? So my uncle used to give me two dollars for a day pass. So this when I was in middle school. No, I mean, uh, uh, on the way to high school from middle school, so I can get a day pass. Catch the bus seventy three. Drop me off right in front of Rice. I run Rice Stadium. Mm-hmm. Run the bleachers. Right, 
I did that like three times a week. Sheesh. And my okay. uncle never had to ask me to get up. You being lazy, do this. Now, what he did do, he instilled into me that um, I couldn't sleep past a certain time. Okay. That's just not that's just not what men do. You get up, you go to work, you do something, you cook, you clean, you cook, whatever it is, mm-hmm. you ain't sleeping. So to this day, I can get in the house at three o'clock, three a.m. in the morning. When the sun peak, I'm hot, I'm sweating, I'm moving. You know what I mean? Yep. So it's just it's, it was instilled in me. All okay. right. So my decision making with with uh, going to the University of, uh, of Houston was uh, <clears throat> it's a little crazy. So. I was recruited by Jason Phillips. Coach P, okay. Yeah, yeah, it's my dog, man. Yeah, it's my dog too, man. All right, so uh, he uh, he basically sold me the the dream on staying home and and uh, playing in front of the home team, man. You can get, I mean, you can have what he said, man. You can bring whole sunny side to the game. Ooh, and I'm like, ooh, okay. Nice. That sounds good. That, <laughs> that sounds I good mean, to who, a kid, who man. wouldn't want that? Right. You know, that's 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 what you do as a uh, as a coach. You you paint the picture for the kids so they can see it. Right, mm-hmm. and you got to make them believe in it. Right, and I believe now. <clears throat> um, it's gonna hurt me to say this because mm-hmm. I know you're a Florida guy, but the oh, University man. of Florida offered me. Oh wow, Urban was Urban Meyer at the time. Yeah, Urban Meyer was there, but Dan Mullen was the coordinator. Okay, and he came by. Oh, Dan Worthen. Mullen with the with the knock yeah. knees. Right? Yeah, he's smaller now. So oh, he is. Yeah, he, he in shape <laughs> oh, now. Wow. So, but uh, shout out, coach. He uh, he offered me. Uh, Never forget it. I was sitting in algebra, and uh, my algebra teacher, who I thought hated me, but she was just tough on me because she didn't want me to be like the normal athlete, you know, go to college and not do nothing, or yeah. drop out or flunk out, right? Yeah. So uh, he knocked on the door. She let me go outside and talk to him. She stepped out and talked to him. Um, and Coach Mullen was like, hey, man, we won't get you down to Friday Night Lights. Right, so I hit Coach Phillips up. Hey, Florida just offered. Like, Ooh, he was like, "It's tough, man. You don't want to stay with the home team." I'm like, Florida, <laughs> right, right, yeah. So uh, this is oh six. This is the middle of Tebow mania. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like it's, it's, it's my but, teammate growing up, bro. and he said, "Hey, deal. you're gonna be the next Pressy Harvey." Oh, and I'm like, Pressy. Who I think yeah. probably one of the best college football players all around. Wow, you actually remind me a lot of Percy Harvin. Yeah, that's I, what, I mean, I think that's why Dan recruited me. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna tell you a story when we played Mississippi State. You know, what he said to me was, you know, really. Oh, hold on, hold on, before we okay, get there. Before get there. Okay, 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 I, okay. I, I, I sound so, like I remember that. But, um, so, so uh, how you how you chose you of age was Coach P came. And he said, son, look. Hold on. I'm not there yet. Oh, oh, okay. I'm not there yet. So I get the Florida offer, right? So I'm on cloud nine. Then all of them start rolling in. I got them, I got them on clockwork, right? Uh-huh. So <laughs> start feeling myself like every kid does, right? Sure. Uh, second game of the season, we playing against Booker T. Washington. Or was it Westbury? I don't, I don't know. I think it was either or. Booker T, I know. I don't even know why I'm playing. I know. Uh, they had a guy that was going to Texas, a DN. Uh, we in the red zone. Uh, quarterback drop back. Try to throw it to the tight end. He picks it, the DN, and he takes off. I'm gonna oh, no. wait in the corner. Being a track guy, you gotta go run him down, right? So yeah. I go run the guy down. Not only I catch him, I'm trying to slam him on his neck. So I grab him and he kind of feel me lift lift him off the ground. He just drops his dead weight. Wow. Snap my ankle. Ooh. I popped up and I looked down and my feet was behind me. I'm sorry for everybody who's going to paint that picture in their head. But yeah, my foot was behind me. And my other one was like this, so it was like that. Oh, right? wow. So I'm, I'm. And this was oh. this was your senior year in high school? Senior year in high school. Wow, okay. So, uh, yeah, um, got rest of the ER, had uh, emergency surgery. G- great thing is I had Dr. Ray Duke mm-hmm. look at my x-ray. Mm-hmm. Like I watched him look at my x-ray. And your leg was like an L? Uh, no, nah, you know they put it back. Degrees. They bring it back. Yeah. Uh, put the little bubble cast on it and whatnot. So you know, uh, it looked. It to me, I don't know what I was looking at, but you, clearly you could see a break in the fibula, right? Okay. So, so you, so uh, you broke your you broke your ankle. Yeah, rod, six screws. Um, that's still in there to this day. Wow. Okay. Um, but I never knew that. <clears throat> I never knew that this entire time. Yeah. So hmm. I was. Um, you know, you it, and and what people don't understand about athletes. Like, 
the only people who understand athletes are really athletes yeah. because nobody understands how much it takes to get to that point. Yeah. How much sure. you have to endure to get to a scholarship or get to Saturday in college, right? right? Yeah. You got to go through some shit, man. We talking about from school to practice, coaches down your throat, yeah. girlfriend issues, <laughs> family problems at home, you know, yeah. all that, man. And, and nobody take that into consideration. That's why I get I get, I get, get frustrated when, you know, reporters and stuff, they want to get rid of kids. Yeah. And I'm like, man, what you do at 20? Right. What you do at exactly. 19? What you do at 19, right? I know what Just we did no at 19. Do, hey, you, you, you can speak no for cameras. yourself. <clears throat> no cameras. You can speak right. for yourself. So, so look. What you talk about. But, and, 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 um, you know, I, I go through that depression state in the hospital. Yeah. You know, my first time really dealing with um, what I call uh, football depression. Mm. Uh, hold, it, hold on, hold on, hold on. Don't go there because I look, I know where you're going. I know where you're going. <laughs> and my goodness, if my heart ain't start racing, boy. All right. All right. So, check, check this. So, I'm, I'm not going because I was going to go there. I'm glad you stopped me. Uh, yeah. So, um, you know, um, at that point, it was a dead period. So, yeah. I'm hitting Florida. They, they can't talk to me. I'm yeah. hitting U of H. They can't talk to me. Wow. Best thing ever happened. Now, uh, one thing U of H was doing, they was recruiting me for both. Florida began to do it also, but U of H was recruiting me for both. And uh, Coach, Coach Will Blackburn walked into the, the room, <clears throat> and he was like, T. I was like, oh, what's up, Coach? Oh, man, how you doing? He was like, how you doing? And I'm like, my heart racing. I'm trying to act like, no, they say I'm going to be good. I'm going to be walking tomorrow. <laughs> you know, right. trying to keep my scholarship because that's all I have. I can't pay for school. My mom ain't got no money. I'm, I'm being raised by my uncle. Wow, man. Like, I, I don't, we don't have anything. You right. know what I'm saying? So I know my only way is with a scholarship. So mm -hmm. I was about to tell him I can get up and run right now, knowing I could, right? But he was like, hey, don't don't worry about all that. You st worst case scenario, if football don't want you, we're gonna sign you to a full track scholarship. I cried right there. Wow. wow. Coach Blackburn was the only person, well he was that person who walked in there and like took all that pressure off my shoulders. That's insane, man. So um, that made the decision more than anything. Uh, unfortunately, Coach Phillips ended up taking a job to Baylor. Coach oh, Browse yeah. was still there, who we all, you know, yeah. was recruited by. Um, he was still there, but I just didn't feel like football really wanted me. And then at the last minute, uh, they was like, oh, we'll take you as a, you know, we'll give you a full, full ride for football. And I'm like, yeah, I know I'm, I know I'm, I'm the, the scraps. So, you know, being yeah. five foot seven anyway, that chip already on the shoulder. Gotcha, so man. Yeah. he didn't, they just wired me up even more. So I came in early. Yeah. Um, you remember I came in early. It is summertime. Yeah. And got killed, yep. got thrown in the fire. Yes, she did. And I remember Andre Kong coming to me, putting my head, hey, man, just stick it now, man. That's, this stuff ain't easy, man. I know we make it look easy, but hey, I'll tell you. <laughs> it's yeah. hard, man. It's so, hard. So, you know, I, I, oh. after Coach Blackburn was there, I chose U, U of H and ended up going on a recruiting visit for football. Had a horrible host. Um, <laughs> Bro, you know you had a good time. Don't even act like that. You know you had a good time. Oh, I forgot. You was my host, yeah, right? Yeah, oh, I had, had a great time. time. I had a great time. I had a great time. So... Yeah, that was my that was my recruiting process, man. Okay, so and there were so many things that you said that were nuggets, bro. I mean, from the hard work mm -hmm. to what it takes to be an athlete behind the scenes. Because a right. lot of times, students uh, they'll see collegiate athletes and say, "Oh, they got everything handed to them," oh. right? But I, what I love to ask them is, "What are you doing at four thirty in the morning?" Right? Mm -hmm. What are you What are you doing around six? Right, you have the opportunity to get an internship. You have an opportunity to have a part-time job. You have an opportunity to actually be prepared for life outside of football. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's let's take a, let's take a sip to that. Right, <laughs> take a sip to that. that. <laughs> we got a toast to right, that, right? Yeah, right? So, the 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 crazy thing is mm -hmm. is that there's so there's so much work that goes on behind the scenes uh, right. to even make it to college football, right? So. I mean, look, one percent or of, of high school students are going to go and be uh, collegiate athletes mm -hmm. and actually have meaningful uh, careers, right? Right, and then um, even less than that will go and play on to some professional sport. Mm -hmm. But so th this is the thing that I heard also when you were speaking, man, is that the circumstance kind of made that decision for you. Um, was there ever any consideration given to our school of business? 
right, uh, to the to the medical program at the University of Florida. For me, certainly, it it was all about. I mean, I fell in love with Coach Browse. Mm-hmm. I fell in love with the city. Mm-hmm. I fell in love with the team. Uh, a lot of kids have an opportunity of being, you know, uh, say my my mom went to college, my dad, my uncles, all of their brothers and sisters, first generation college. Graduate, Me too, right? So, Mayo. was there any was there any other consideration given to where you want to go for school other than sports? No. Okay. Right. But we program to know our only way out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like. That is that is my problem with a lot of with the way college football works at times. Mm-hmm. Um, I only had one way out, and you know sometimes it's hard for other coaches to to really understand a kid who only had one way out. This is the way I'm gonna make my life. Mm-hmm. Like this is the way I'm gonna be successful. Like people don't understand that. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. And, it's and, all you got, really. And, 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 day, and yeah. you hit on the point where the, the regular student just say we got everything made for us. Now, you weren't in that class, but Dr. Bot, uh, Dr. Bot back, back in, yeah. he's, he's back, he's back in uh, London now, but uh, we love Dr. Bot, man. We did. Uh, we did, yeah. So Dr. Bot went to go check on his dad back in London, right? So he was gone for like two weeks. Um, and, um, some students said the football players was acting up in class. Oh, wow. So you already know how Coach Sumlin rolled, right? Oh, yeah. Hey, hey, what'd you say? Come here. <laughs> yeah, I got you. Oh, y'all want to act up in class? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know, he rolled us, up, down us, did everything. Wow. Right before 545 workouts, because, you know, all the freshmen work out at 545. That's right. Right? So 45. he destroyed us. And we saying, Coach, I promise you we didn't do it. Because Dr. Byatt wrote to the academic um, MC now yeah. and said the football players was doing this. Oh, wow. Dr. Byatt said that? Mm-hmm. Huh. So um, i never forget this, man. Uh, I walked in and coached someone in the office. I was like, look, coach, I promise you, on my life, you know, black folks say, on my life a lot. <laughs> on my mama. Uh, on my mama now. <laughs> right. Uh, that I, I promise you we wasn't doing that. I'm in that class, you know, I'm going to take the punishment if we messed up, but I'm not going to do a punishment for something we didn't do. Right. And, uh, you know, that day we went to class and we all, all of us was hot. Um, you know, uh, I still got a little sunny side in me. I don't know how to control that at that point. So, okay. I, you know, I'm I'm muscle shirt. You know, we fresh off them weights now. Oh, my so, gosh. Yeah. And it was hot. So, you know, <laughs> we already tired. We had to go to this class. Mm-hmm. So I stood up. I'm like, hey. Who wrote the letter? In class or like right before class. class is about to start? In cl- right before it started. Who wrote the letter? Wow. I'm like, all the football players sit here. And then Dr. Bach walk in. I was like, oh crap. But I'm already going. Like when my, you know, you know the competitive nature. Oh, like, yeah, don't sure. don't test me. I'm gonna show up now. Yeah. So um <laughs> Dr. Bach was like, hey. I was like, we didn't do anything in here. And we over here getting killed. Before we get killed, <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> because somebody said that, and then the I guess later on in that day, Doctor Bot, I guess whoever like uh, was acting up in there in the back, it was a couple guys, you know. Yeah, they they were swole, so they, you know, you know, the average student would think it's a a football player, oh, right? Wow. So oh, he kind of confessed to it. So all the people who wrote bad notes. Dr. Bot said, I just want you to do what they do for one day. <laughs> if you do that, you'll pass my class with an A. We had, they had regular, we had our regular students dying in warm-ups. Oh, they came out and worked out? They died in warm-ups. Oh, wow. They, they, they could have got an A if they do the whole workout for the year. Yeah. I mean, who wouldn't, who wouldn't jump on that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They was dying in workouts. That's insane. So that was the only time a regular student actually got the the idea of what we go through. How they coming in their class? They sleep. Yeah, we was up at four fifty to get here for five forty five, 
Because you know you couldn't get there at 545. Oh, no. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You get there at 545. You, it was a whistling uh, when you running on the field, yeah. And then everybody got to do some dirt. Mm-hmm. And everybody looking at you like, come on, con. Right. A con. Yeah, I mean, you know, it was a couple times. I was times. late. I never. Uh, but, um. So, but look, so, you know, that was the first time that I felt like, all right, like somebody understands. Yeah. Somebody understands. But the average person don't know how much you have to invest into it, what your upcoming is. I mean, your up, the way you came up, you program like, look, if you want to get out. Yeah. If you want to make money, if you want to better yourself, mm. it's either the drug game or you can go through sports. Yeah. I you mean, know, that's how uh, it was for and, sure. and, and and the truth is, we got a couple people that was really smart. Yeah, man. Uh, I was just street smart. You know what I mean? I used to have people tell me like, "Man, how you know this is about to start shooting or it was about to fight?" And like, this was at Sunny Side or yeah, in college? Both. Both. Yeah, 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 yeah. that's right. Like, that's the right. spidey sense go off, and you be like, "Yeah, I can." Yeah, let's go. <laughs> let's get out of here. Let's yep. get out of here. So okay, so man, you definitely took that spidey sense onto the field, right? Oh, um, U of H. So here you are, man. Um, bro, like honestly, you know, I, I would prefer to to sit here and just give you a hard time and make fun of you, and you know. All I mean, stuff that's what you time. do. That's what I do. All you know, all, all usually what I do. Right. But bro, like it was, it was remarkable watching you play. I remember this game against SMU, and I think this was the game. I thought it was a game you had the concussion. Maybe it was some other game, but you caught this bomb in the back of the end zone. I want to say, oh yeah, and it was like was the game winning touchdown. Okay, that's a game. Did you have a concussion that game? Huh? Did, oh yeah, so you did. You don't even remember? All what? right, <laughs> you had a concussion I that game. I caught the game winner. You did. Okay, right. All right. And uh, I remember that game how I felt. I remember I didn't have on my knee brace, and you know I had torn my ACL mm-hmm. some time ago. I had full, made a full recovery, and um, and then Doc, our team doctor was like, Con, where's your knee brace? And I was like, Doc, it's restrictive. And he was like, you're being selfish. You're being selfish, right? Mm-hmm. And f- when he when he did that, it just made me feel terrible, bro, for the rest of the for the rest of the game. Mm-hmm. Right. And then it wasn't until you caught that bomb in the back of the end zone. I don't know what it, it didn't have nothing it didn't have anything to do with me, but I felt like I was also <laughs> catching that bomb in the back of the end zone. You, you know, know why though, right? Right, I do. I do. Because I know your story, man. All right, and, because and you was a part of you was a part of my process of coming in U of H. Right. Straight up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean yeah. it was it was inspiring, is what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. Right. And you you had an opportunity to inspire so many people on and off the field. Um, I mean, like I said before, bro, thirty five hundred uh plus career uh, yards, something silly like a, a catch or two catches in, in every game that you played in. That, that's another NCAA record. Bro, you qualify for the Olympic trials. Mm-hmm. Do you remember that? Yeah. <laughs> do you remember that? Yes, I do. Right. We got the Olympics going on right now. Mm-hmm. Why didn't you run in the Olympics? What happened with that? Um, so the funny thing is um, um, during my red shirt year, I qualified. I was uh, 19 years old and qualified for the Olympic trials, right? Wow. Um, made it to the semifinals, not the finals. Okay. Uh, because I realized that these guys put their whole life into it. Yeah. Kind of like what we do with football, right? And it's disrespectful for me to come out there and think that I'm only putting four months into this and you didn't put your whole life into it. Wow. Then I'm going to beat you. That's I realized at that point that I'm fast. But oh my God, they fast. Oh yeah. Oh, no <laughs> Do you remember anyone you raced? Oh, oh yeah. Let, let me tell you. Let me tell you the heat, the semi heat. Um, Walter Dix. Oh, I remember Walter Dix. Florida State. Yes. Florida State. Oh, uh, see, that's yeah. why. That's the only reason why you know. Oh, I'm just saying. Okay. That. All right. So look, Walter Dix, Tyson Gay, and Justin Gallant just came off a of band. Oh my goodness. In my semifinal heat, top three wow. go. Wow, wow! 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 It's it's Walter Dix. Oh, you're you're re- you're running I am in, this in the heat? I am in the and race. This is a two hundred. I wish somebody can pull that film, but two hundred, and they say, Phew. and excuse my French. I was like, oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> and I'm I'm football player. Yeah, he's a man at that point. Cocky. Too, yeah, yeah. Well, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I didn't play a snap then. Was this 2008? This 2008. Okay. I didn't. I didn't really. I didn't play a snap yet. 
You know okay. what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm, I'm coming straight off a red shirt yep. into mm-hmm. track season. That's right. That's right. All right. Um, which they didn't want me to do, but here we go. Um, I line up next to these guys, and me being the, I mean, I'm a product of my environment, right? Fear no man. I fear God. That's it. That's good. So, like, yeah, they they put they they my heart beat just as big as theirs. You know what I mean? Yeah. And they stuff just a little bit bigger than mine. Yeah, uh, their their technique is is way better than mine. That's and, insane. Um, you said Justin Gatlin, Walter Dix, Walter Tyson Gay, Tyson Gay. Oh. Yeah, same okay. heat. And I'm like, I'm like, oh, y'all didn't match them. <laughs> <laughs> you could just put them in other heats, right? Give me in a, in a wig heat or something. You know what I'm right. saying? Okay. So, uh, <clears throat> gun goes off, and literally Walter Dix fly by me so fast. I felt so disrespected. Right, but Coach Burrell told me this. He was like, "T, you're not gonna make it through the rounds. You're not conditioned." And my little sunny side boy was like, "What? Is that a challenge? Bet, watch." Well, what people don't know is when you watch the Olympic trials, the first two rounds are like 45 minutes apart. Oh wow! Okay. Now you're thinking, "Oh, I just ran one time." Literally, you sprint that. As hard as you possibly can. Right. The fastest you've ever ran in your entire life. And your heart, by the time it's time to run again, your heart just starting to settle down. Mm-hmm. Right? Lactic acid is just starting to build up. And you got to run again. And the only way you can do that is you've been putting this work in since August. Gotcha. Okay. Mm. Which I soon realized that I'm not as fast as I thought it was. Yes. Okay. So, what did that teach you? I came in sixth place, by the way. You came in sixth place? Oh, it was bad. Was it a nine-lane track? Yeah. Okay. But I watched a great race from behind. You did? (laughs) (laughs) I always wonder, like, so, even when I ran track, and I only ran track in in high school, Mm -hmm. and I would also intentionally get in the the fast heats. Yeah. Right? And I would run the That's that football you go. Yeah. It's like, man, I'm going to get in here, man. What you mean? I'm going to get in here, get in there, you know? And I had a I had a rule DBL don't be last <laughs> right <laughs> don't be last so I'll I'll get in there with Brandon James I don't know if you remember him he yes. went to he went to Florida about you went in there with Brandon James yeah Brandon James Xavier Carter and I'll, I'll ne- yes and I'll never forget this I will never forget X. this as long as I live X as long as I live I'll never forget this I got out on the boys this was the um, this was this was either the Bob Hayes or the Cheeseboro in Jacksonville yeah but Con, you went slow though. Yeah, I wasn't slow, but I, I definitely wasn't wasn't there there fast. And let me tell right. you how I got humbled. Same way, I remember I got out of them boys for the first sixty meters, or so sixty meters or so, mm-hmm. and then literally all I saw in the corner of my eye was like that. Right, Brandon James, just his head bobbing like that. Yeah, and then I ended up finishing like fifth or something like that. And we had a nine lane track in high school, so you know my my rule was getting the fast heat. You're a football guy. Don't be last. Don't be last. Right. But um, it it would it was definitely humbling. So, what that taught me, and I would imagine also probably what it taught you, man, is that there's always somebody better. Always. There's always somebody faster. Always. There's always somebody stronger. Uh, there's always somebody smarter. There's always someone just better than you. Mm-hmm. So it taught me at a very young age, brother, like you, you have you some swag, man. Like you know, have you some confidence. But at the same time, like you have to keep in mind that there's somebody else out there. That's just so much better than you, you know, at everything. Now, I feel like that had, didn't that give you some type, type of chip on your shoulder, bro? No you had question. to take something on the field. No, I'm five foot seven. So, you, okay. So, talk about how on you paper. took that on the field, bro. On paper. On, a, on paper. On paper. Okay. So, um, yeah, I, I mean, I took my hood, I'm sorry, my <laughs> upbringing where I'm from. Don't apologize, bro. You took the hood. On the a, on a field. Yeah. Straight up. Like, <clears throat> if you... Get a cheap shot on me. I'm going to punch you. Mm. And hopefully I don't get a flag. In the game? In the game. Like in the, like. Ah, uh, ah. Uh, Coach Phillips be like, hey, chill out. <laughs> hey, I bet he liked that about you. He though. did. You he know, did. Coach Phillips is a yeah. savage. Yeah. So, but <clears throat> that was the thing. Like I took my anger and my frustration, my upbringing um, on the field. Like anything I had that pissed me off, I can release it. Yeah. Like, um, best thing that ever happened to me, which made me a really good receiver, was going against, you remember Kenny Funnett? Oh, yeah. I remember Kenny. Kenny whooped my ass 
every day my freshman year. Kenny was just very methodical and like just, just patient. Right. He was patient and he was strong as shit. Yeah. That's that like, Pflugerville. Who? That's, no, he's from Pflugerville. I know. I, that's why I said who. Uh, I, I, okay, nobody gotcha, cares. Gotcha. His, his people then went to Worthing. So that's oh, what I, yeah. Oh, so, okay. I got you. But anywho, uh, he he was like, I ain't, I ain't letting you up. I'm 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 gonna I'm embarrass you if you let me. And then we got to the point he couldn't touch me. And that's when I slowly started merging. You know wow. what I'm saying? So bro, we talked about we talked about the college career, man. We talked about SMU. I mean, you know, there's all these bowl games, all these championships and different things that you participated in that you won. Right. <clears throat> um and talk about talk about tearing your ACL. What was that uh, like? Just gonna bring me now. What was that? <laughs> Uh, <clears throat> never forget it. I'm fighting for a first down on the sideline, number six from Penn State. Uh, horse calling me, and I hear the loudest pop I think I ever heard. Um, now, you know, you get your draft grade before the end. They talk about you. Hey, you're running four two. You gonna be this, right? And I'm like four <laughs> two. I got that. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So. All your dreams is just like right there and I'm looking at them, right? Uh, what people don't know is the first time I ever cheated, um, I stayed out later than curfew, hmm. right? Because I did everything right up to that point. I was like, I deserve, you know what I mean? Wow, you feel like you deserve to tear your ACL? No, I deserve to Cheat curfew. Oh, okay, gotcha, gotcha, I mean, gotcha. I, For okay. years, I done seen guys cheat curfew, yeah. sneaking, right? So I'm like, fuck, how I many? I've been doing it right for four years. Yeah. You know what I mean? Five so years, the, actually. The athlete know? mentality is crazy, You know bro. what I'm saying? Yeah. So, and people don't understand that, you yeah. know? But that, that's what it was. I'm like, man, look, I deserve that. And uh, it was actually not the day of the game, the day before the game, uh, where I cheated and literally... The night before the game, I couldn't sleep because I felt like I cheated myself. Mm -hmm. Right? You, you're the first person ever hearing this. Um, stay out late in what I was supposed to. And why? It was nothing to stay out late for. I just did it for the hell of it. Just because you wanted to. Right. Because okay. I did everything right. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I want to be a rebel. Yeah. So, I uh, heard the loudest pop of my life. Really, um, to be honest, it fucked me up. Um, In what way? Mentally. Because? Nothing physical about it. I knew I was gonna snap back from it, but I knew at five foot seven, I had to run a four two, which I would uh, with ease. Um, I knew it was over. You know what I mean? You have yeah. to deal with that and <clears throat> all the sacrifices you made. I did, and, and I told myself when it happened. But how about this? Let me paint the picture. Right, Penn State, Ticket City Bowl. Um, Coach Sumner ended up leaving, broke everybody hard, mine included. He was like a father figure. Um, to the head coach leave? To go right. to AM. Okay. Right. Yep. Doing a, we kind of found out doing, um, you know, uh, conference championship week. Uh, my feelings was hurting. You know me, I've always been a rebel. I'm speaking it. I'm like, man, if y'all ass don't want to be here, don't be here. Like, mm -hmm. I've been that guy, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, that's what case come in. Hey, T, 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 ta, ta, chill out, chill out. <laughs> but you know, case I, Keenum. yeah, case Keenum. Shout out so, to case. Uh, I call him seven, but anywho, um, you know, he he was like, chill out, chill out, and I'm like, man, no, cluck that. That's case. That's you, That's cluck, me. That's cluck me. that. <laughs> uh, they don't want to be here. They don't gotta be here. So, you no know, emotional time, emotional time. Uh, so, so tell me about this, man. Here's the thing. You talked about all these sacrifices that coming from high school. You know, I, I, I remember there's times you, you shared with us, man, that you didn't, have a, you didn't sleep in a bed until you got to Cullen Oaks, right? Yeah, that was a nice bed. That was uh, the first time you slept in a bed? So any bed I slept in wasn't mine beforehand. Wow. Right? I slept on couches. That's, and that was just because you were being raised by your uncle and your mom. and Right. So my mom, I love her to death. She's the best grandmother ever. Mm. You know what I mean? Uh, mom was a single single parent. She was a mama and daddy. 
Uh, but, you know, being an athlete, I kind of realized what the depressions are. I mean, my mom had to do this shit all by herself. Yeah. Uh, and you watch her work, and, and I, now I'm going to just say this. My mom, she had eight brothers. She was the only girl. Yeah. Right? Um, oh, I'm sorry. Seven boys and one girl. Okay. And she was the last one. Right? So she's like the golden child. So they they basically did everything for her. I think my mom, my uncle actually told me, my Uncle Tyrone, said my mom didn't have to pay a bill until she was like 28, 29. Oh, wow. Sheesh. So, um, yeah, she was the, she was, you know, the little, the, everybody took care of, the person she everybody took care of. Uh, yeah. she's, the, she's the sister. Right. So, you, so you're thinking about, and I, and I remember when I, you know, I tore both my ACLs, bro. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And I can imagine if I'm, if I'm you and I tear my ACL, I'm thinking about the sacrifice that I've made this entire time, all this time and work that I put into it. I'm thinking about, you know, coming from essentially nothing, man, sleeping on the couch, sleeping on the floor to having an opportunity to go get a higher education mm -hmm. and, you know, have a nice bed. Um, I'm thinking about all the countless hours of workouts, mm -hmm. of study hall, mm -hmm. of treatment, of, of class, of all of these things that, that collegiate athletes go through. And doing that and then getting in and then breaking all these collegiate records and getting into your senior year, tearing your ACL. I mean, you had to feel like everything was taken from you, bro. Like literally everything was taken from you. So I never missed a game. Uh, broke ribs. Ankle sprains, partially pulled hamstrings, uh, torn ligaments, ligaments in my elbow, <clears throat> nerve damage, um, uh, like messed up jaw. Concussions. Uh, who? <laughs> yeah, concussions. Right. Um, I gave it everything, and I felt like if you, you know, in life, we're, I mean, just the human right. If I give you so much, I need something in return, right? And like I said, the loudest pop I heard in my life. Um, never forget it. Doc came down and did it. Mm. Like checked it and walked off. Walked off. <laughs> That's what he does. Yeah. And I was like. That's our, our team doctor, man. Yeah, walk, Doc check O'Shea, it, walked off. The, the goat, what I call him. Um, doctor, did Dr. Lowe come also? Then Check Dr. Lowe came. Okay. And he did the same thing. Yep. Walked off. And me being who I am, I'm like, cluck that. <laughs> like, I'm good. Did you and stand I, up? I stood up and I tried to jog. Mm -hmm. And my whole knee literally just, this is my quad area. This is the lower part. Yeah. And these two are the kneecaps, right? And it literally did that when I was jogging. Okay, so hold on, bro. Let's talk about this Ooh. for a second. Let's talk about this for a second. And it is, I'll be real with you, bro. Like, I, I remember how that felt. And uh, I, I remember kind of watching you go through it. And um, I think the thing that people who aren't athletes or who maybe have never uh, competed at that level understand is that this isn't just some kid getting some injury, some guy getting some injury. All due respect. Imagine Beyonce losing her voice. Imagine, imagine, you know, uh, I don't know, some other talented professional not having the ability to do what they've given their heart and soul to. What do you do now? You know, like you can't just, oh, well, I'll, I, even though I've dedicated my entire life to this, let me just go and do something else that I've never thought of or ever been prepared for. These people have been doing these things that they've been, you ever seen the movie Doctor Strange? No, I haven't. Okay, so Doctor Strange, he's he's a Marvel superhero. And he's this millionaire or potentially billionaire uh, surgeon. Iron Man? No, this is, <laughs> this is Doctor Strange. <laughs> and then Doctor Strange, he gets in this terrible, horrific car accident and he can no longer use his hands to perform surgery, mm. right? So now he doesn't have the steady hands he needs to, to, to do the thing that makes him who he is. This is, mm -hmm. how, this is his identity, right? Now here you are, you tear your ACL, your identity's gone, mm. potentially, right? You're no, in your senior gone. year, it's gone. It's gone. So walk me through your, like, what are you thinking in that? Like, how do you, how do you cope with that? Um, I remember 
watching an agent I was supposed to sign with, big time guy. Mm. When I got on the sideline, they had me on the back bench, uh, like right behind the bench on the table before they had the little things that come up and cover up the players so you don't get to see them, yeah. right? So, um, and uh, I watched him walk out. Um, he walked out of the stadium? Walked out. Oh, wow. When when you when you got hurt, Doc came over to Tat. Dr. Lowe, Tata, both of them walk off. Dr. Lowe cried. Mm. Um, I don't know. If, I don't know if you want anybody to know that, That's but all right, man. he was uh, he, like his eyes was watery. I was like, and I'm, you know, you know how it is. You're in disbelief. Yeah. Like no, I'm, I'm, I am. In my mind, I'm Tyrone Carey. Like I play every game. I, I get hurt and I play. Mm-hmm. Like I'm tough as shit. Mm-hmm. I don't. Nothing phase me. Whole ACL. Oh, but you was human that day. Oh, <laughs> you was human reality. that day. All right. I, I remember this. Um, I, I remember that 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 identity. Right. We were talking about how you can go into a depression, and maybe sometimes you realize it, but as a kid, you don't realize that. Yeah, guess this though. So, Mikado Henson was our chaplain. Um, he found out from Doc. Mikado breaks the news to me. I don't even know if he know that to this day. Oh, he broke the news about your ACL being torn? He was like, look, delayed, delayed is not denied. Being denied is not the answer. Wow. Right? So, I mean, being delayed is not the answer. Okay, so delayed, delayed is not the answer. He was like, uh, brother, you're going you gonna to work through that? You're going you gonna to be successful? And I'm crying in his arms. And then... My girlfriend at the time, who's now my wife, makes her way to the sideline. My mom makes her way to the sideline. I didn't. I didn't know y'all were even dating. Yeah, that. we had to. We had to. We had to spread our wings. Okay. Right. Yeah. So, um, <clears throat> um, we um, we cried. Like I, I was. I was. I was messed up. Right. I, Case came over and was like choked up. Right. Wow. You That's know. Insane, man. Um, after the game, I got a photo of Case giving me the trophy. He was like, T, man, like, you ain't never missed a game. This yours. Like, wow. put this in your car and take it home with you. Wow. Case. That's what we love Case Keenum, bro. But he said, a, I, I'm not going to say it, but he said a word that's Case, not Case. Yeah, like, case, yeah. Well, he only said it two times in our career. Al Force. Yeah, when I, I that. We ain't losing no more blanking games. Yeah. Okay. And then at that moment, but uh, at that point, it hit me, and I was depressed. And I smile, and I act like nothing was wrong. But uh, in my mind, I was like, I don't have nothing. Yeah. Like I got a degree, but I got this degree to play football. Yeah. Like, what do you? What do you? <laughs> right. This is what you're giving your heart and soul to. Right. You know. So tell me about this, bro. Uh, so your girlfriend at the time, mm-hmm. right? She eventually became your wife. She did. Right. Um, lucky her. <laughs> lucky me. Right. Yeah. Lucky. Lucky you. Yeah. Uh, so she was your girlfriend at the time. She be- she eventually became your wife. How does a how does a girlfriend support a collegiate athlete? That is just having everything taken away from them. Uh, by having a dad that was a coach and two brothers that were players mm. and now coaches. And she was a superstar in her own right, right? Yeah, she yeah, was a yeah. track. Un- unfortunately, they retired her at uh, North Texas. They retired her number? No, they retired her. At, she's in the Hall of Fame. Oh, wow. At North okay. Texas. I'm sorry. She's a Hall of Famer in North Texas. U of H having uh, put me. <laughs> well, right hey, you, you got to do something about that. You know, for um, Tito Perez, but um, uh, Pez, um, Pez uh, she um, she's in the Hall of Fame there. Okay, she's first ballot. So she, so she, she, she knew how to handle that, or at least she did her best. Her older brother, I mean, her twin brother, had to deal with the facts that year that he wasn't going to be. You know, an NFL player. So okay. she kind of dealt with that with him. Her older brother went through it. Who mm-hmm. is Mister Georgia? Nobody broke his record. I call him the goat, Arthur Adams. Um, he literally had the most tackles in Georgia history. Oh wow! Right. Okay. So, but he was five foot 
ten, which that wasn't pop- popular at the time. Mm-hmm. So uh, she she was she was what I tell her. I'm like, babe, you was coach right. You know what I mean? You you had athletes in your family. You know what the sacrifice is. So mm-hmm. like people be telling me like, man, there's so many coaches who get divorces because they spend so much time in the office. Which you know, a lot of the time you just go out in your desk, but. I be saying a lot of these cats don't even want to go home wow. because they don't, they get the beauty and they don't get the, you know, the intriguing part of a woman. You know what I mean? So I have both. Wow. That's a, you know that's I mean? a blessing, man. That's a blessing. And so, um, bro, you got, you got three boys. I do. You got Tyrone, you have Tatum and you have Titan. Titan's my middle child. Titan's my baby. That's beautiful. And TJ, what we call TJ. You know, for a while, you got to be careful with nicknames because he thought his name was TJ. <laughs> you never knew his name. And I'm was like, Tyler. hey, no, it's an abbreviation. It's just like condensed. You're, you're, you're my. We got the same name. Right. Right. So, middle, last. All my boys got my middle name and last name. Okay, that, yeah. and that's that's dope, man. But so, uh, my question to you is, bro, you're a devoted father. Mm-hmm. Right, loving, loving husband. You know, I mean, you got your wife, man. You got your three beautiful sons. Hopefully, they grow up, break records, do whatever the the hell it is that they want to do. Mm-hmm. Contrast that to growing up, you having to kind of figure things out. Like, what's it like now as a collegiate coach? Uh, how do how are kids making their decisions on where they're going to go to school? Like, I mean, so, is it like it was for you? I had an uncle that played dad, but he wasn't dad. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Like that, that's big. These kids now, like we're the, the generation, a little bit before us, when we didn't have dads. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and I'm not saying just you didn't have a dad, but the majority didn't have a dad. The system locked our dads up and said, hey, mom, if you want to continue to get these, these benefits, dad can't be around. Wow. You have to put dad on this. So, you know, the system kind of pushed them apart. And now we have us. You know what I mean? We have the dad say, no, nah, pluck that. <laughs> <laughs> For you, Bob. I'm going to do whatever I need to do to be in my, my child's life because I didn't have that in my life. So, or, so they're there now. Like yeah. when you go and you recruit as a coach. Man, dad's, dad's full throttle. Wow. And okay. I, I, I love it. Does that you know, change the quality of... Uh, of guy well, that you this, did. Or? This this knocks out a lot of the coaches that think they're good recruiters because they used to working on moms. Mm. Now dad ain't playing that. Dad like, no, I was a, I was a good athlete, and I got told the same shit you telling my son right now. Mm. Oh, I love them cats. Wow. I walk in there, I'm like, what up, pop? Oh yeah, <laughs> those What's are up? those are the guys you're going to talk to. Oh yeah. Okay, and they, and you know, in in, in recruiting, you kind of find out who the person is, right? Yeah. It's a it's a seven on seven coach. It's mom, it's dad, it's the high school coach. Yeah, you know, you got to figure out who it is. Uh, me, I know for one thing, parents will always have an effect, right? Even if they don't even understand, like a Nigerian parent, mm-hmm. it's all about academics. Absolutely, no question. Yeah, right. The hood parents is, you know. <laughs> Most of the time, who gonna pay me? <laughs> wow. Oh, wow. How close my baby gonna be to home? Okay. Or oh, you gonna take care of my baby? So, so okay. Actually, bro, like, you know you know what's going on now, right, with the NIL. All right? So, mm-hmm. look, just Power 5 alone. Power 5 alone, football programs are bringing in over $4 billion in revenue. Right. Right? So, that ends up being really about $27 million per Per university, that's mm-hmm. just for Power Five football alone, right? So if you if you just want to go football and basketball, now you're looking at eight billion dollars in revenue uh, for the NCAA. How much of that should should go to the students? How much of that should go to the guys that are actually putting their names on the line? All right. So if the NCAA wants to fund them, uh, which you know that's a different story. Uh, I mean, a lot of us should go to. Them. But okay. Uh, uh, you have to make sure you align these kids with the um, education and uh, the resources to better themselves. How do they do? How do they do that? Like, who's responsible for that? Who? Who's responsible for? My point exactly. Okay. We don't. We don't. I, I don't know. Right. That's that's like when they're dealing with the NCAA. It's like a little bit out of my hand. Now, what I what I would say is this: uh, 
the likeness part scares me. Why? Um, for instance, let's let's get into a scenario right now. Andre Cohen, you a booster for some school, some some university, right? Mm-hmm. You a billionaire, multi-millionaire. Let's just say multi-millionaire. I like billionaire. I'm gonna give you billion. Okay, all I right. That. So, uh, I'll take that. This kid that's a big time recruit, um, you say that's my guy. I'm endorsing him. Right? I'm gonna pay for his likeness. I'm gonna. I'm going. This is my guy, the player. Mm-hmm. I'm endorsing this player. Right. Okay. You basically paying for his likeness, right? Because yeah. it's all over likeness, right? Yeah. So, uh, and you also give money to that university. So with that being said, what happens if this kid don't play and you got him doing commercials for you and you paid him 300000 What happened? So you're giving him three and you're giving the university a meal. What do you do? Because this kid not playing. How, how does that work? Wow. Right? Or here it is. The university, which most universities will be like, look, you're not gonna run or dictate anything here at this university. This is your choice and it's your decision. I, our coach is gonna make these decisions, the best player will play, which you know most universities are doing that. Mm-hmm. What happens to that kid if he don't perform? You giving him your money. Do you drop him? <clears throat> As the billionaire. Right. You're saying what happens if the kid doesn't perform? Right. We're talking business. We're not talking about kids. They're getting paid for their likeness. And if they likeness you don't like, you have the right as a business owner to say, I'm going to like something else. Wow. That's insane. But hey, how close is my baby going to be to home? Who's going to take care of this? Who's going to who pay me? That's not important. That's not as important anymore. Of course not. The pay me part is the real important part. Okay. Because if I was coming out in this era, I ain't had shit. Mm-hmm. So how does that, okay, so let's talk about that. How does that distract the current player? I'm from Sunnyside, Te- I'm, I'm Tyron Carey from Sunnyside, Texas. Mm-hmm. I'm the fastest guy in the city. I was in the state at that time. <clears throat> I'm the fastest guy in the state, <laughs> right? I'm the fastest guy in the state. And someone comes and says, you know what, Tyron? I want to give you, I want to give you $100,000. Mm-hmm. Right. I know you you never had a solid place to sleep comfortably. I'm going to give you one hundred thousand dollars. How does that change the perspective of that athlete? How does that change that guy who just basically coming from nothing, man? And now you, what you telling me I can hundred thousand. It's going to change your life. So at that time, my mom was working at Walmart. And she was making about twenty five a year. So you just took four years and made it to one. Yep, I'm now. Okay, so who's who's inspecting that contract? Who, right? H- how are my mama don't know nothing about that? So is this is this a good thing for the players or not? We just got to protect them. It is it's great for the it's great for the players. Okay. It is great for them. But how are we protecting them? Right? What about taxes? <whistles> when did you learn about taxes? <sighs> hold on, hold on. Sorry, hold on. Dad. Sorry, Dad. I didn't. <laughs> I, I didn't really learn about taxes until I was a grown man. With right. A house. We don't. We don't learn about taxes until we buy a house. Yeah. Or when Uncle Sam say, "I'm gonna need that. Yeah. Let me get you that back." You mm-hmm. owe me. So, who's educating it? Right. Is it upon the universities? It should be. It should be. It should right? be taught at home though, right? It should be taught at home though, right? When you're from Sunnyside, right. Come on now. So what I'm saying is, though, we used don't, to getting stuff back on taxes. Not I, paying. I, I hear you. I hear you. Right. And I am tell you, trying to forever. But what I, what I'm saying is, shouldn't there be if if a college coach says I'm gonna go to Sunnyside, I'm gonna go to Third Ward, I'm gonna go to uh, Opalaka, right? I'm gonna go to Pork and Beans somewhere in Florida, and I and I want that kid right there. Mm-hmm. And I know for a fact he's gonna come here. He's gonna make more money than his family's ever made in in their entire existence. Isn't there some sort of responsibility that the university has to put certain parameters and controls in place so that kid doesn't just go get the check and lose his mind? 
because they still need them to win football games. What happened, what happened when they go to the NFL and they get the check and lose their mind? But what I'm talking about is right now, though. Yeah, but they have what to you, win games. The the universities are not prepared for that. You know what I mean? They, they're not they're not prepared for that. I, I didn't watch plenty of universities who uh, football programs who said they jumped in front of it and then they still they still getting hit with with haymakers. Well, okay, so so let me ask you this: mm-hmm. What do you do if you're uh, and we've been using you this whole time? So the hell, let's use you. Yeah. If you're Tyron Carrier mm-hmm. and hey, y'all give you this hundred thousand dollar check, right? And here's the contract, sign it. Right? They always Who say reads that. They always say the real criminals say, hey, uh, they, they don't say stick them up. They say, hey, here's a pen, sign this. <laughs> it's <laughs> right? going to help. Those are the real. Future. Those are the real criminals. Yeah. Oh yeah. But um, and not to demonize capitalism, we need capital. Yeah. Uh, what I'm saying is, what if Tyron Carrier signs that that contract, and that contract is for a hundred thousand dollars, sure, but it's on a it's on it's a merit based hundred thousand dollars. Bro, you you gotta you gotta score ten touchdowns. You, you have to. You gotta you gotta look, rush for look. you know a thousand yards. You know who's going to who's going to be that protection? Because here's the thing: when collegiate when when college coaches and you right look, man, this is something to think about when you sit in when you sit in the the homes of these kids. And you talk to the parents and say, hey, I'm going to take care of Tyron. Don't worry about it. I'm going to take care of Andre. I don't want you to worry about him. The conversation is totally different now, bro. Mm. It's not just, hey, they're going to get their school paid for. They're going to get a stipend to take care of their lives. If somebody come and tap them on the shoulder with $100,000, that could potentially ruin their life. So here is me as a coach, right? I'm going to say, look, I'm going to take care of your baby. Your baby will be in my room or he'll be in my building where I coach at. Uh, I'm going to treat him like my own. Any occasional meal I have, he's invited. Right? Yeah. Um, I, I can't control what your baby do as far as who he signs with. I can't. I can't do that. Right? So now, are we telling the parents to, you need to hire an agent. And really, if a kid get an agent at this point, he's he can't play. He's, he's a professional. A he's considered a professional right now. So now, you know, a lot of people got to go back to the drawing table and say, well, who's protecting this kid's better future? Who's looking over these contracts? Because just like the record label deals that they used to have where they say, sign with me, right? I'm going to give you $100,000. But what you don't know, you just sign your life away. The only way to get out of this deal, if you croak. If you die. If you die. All right. Wow. I mean, a lot of people don't know that. But croak <laughs> mean die in right. my neighborhood. So, uh, you know, uh, I, I am I am really intrigued to see how this thing plays out. So uh, it's a good thing in your, in your opinion. If you could give it a bad. direct answer, it's good or it's bad? I don't know. I, it's no direct answer because check this out. So now your baby just became a professional at 18 years old. Yeah. He has to hold up to a contract at 18 years old. But to be honest, they've been holding up to it. We held up to a contract. Yeah, we do. You have to keep this GPA in order to be eligible to play. You got to pass this many hours <laughs> in order to be eligible to play. But, <laughs> oh, you know, that's just that's just what it was. We used to sign four-year contract. I mean, yeah. uh, four-year scholarships. You know they sign one years now. Wait, what? Wait. Oh, okay, unpack that. All right, so now a coach can say, I want to bring you back or not. I want to bring you back a what? Or not. Or or not. Or not. So it's on a... It's Andre Kahn, you didn't... You wasn't the guy I thought you were. You might need to find another school to go to. Wow. Because I'm not renewing your scholarship. Wow. Okay, so so time out. Um, we we that that's crazy. I've never heard that. Um, Did? No, never heard of that. And we we always talk about the power that the athlete now has that they didn't have before. Mm-hmm. Is that the ability to transfer? Uh, that's not the power. That's not the athlete power. That, the, the athlete power? power is now they have a voice. Um, there were some things that happened to us when we played. 
You yeah. know what I mean? We had a we had a storm happen and we're playing a game and we had a coach that just was like, forget y'all. Do it on your own. Mm-hmm. And we balled, right? Yeah. Now a kid can go to be like, yeah, forget that coach. You know what I mean? He he has a voice. Uh now, that's a respect factor to everything. You know what I mean? Yeah. There's a respect factor to everything. But now a kid can say, I don't like this. We couldn't do that before. A kid can say, you know, uh, I think that was racist. Oh, wow. Just like that, straight up. They can say that now. Hmm. Okay. And either um, a coach that either looks like them or don't look like them can say, well, I apologize. Tell me what I have to do to, you know, make this right. Or tell me where you're coming from. Now, uh, this generation is a lot softer than what we are, what we were. Yeah. Um, you know, and every coach got to adapt to the generations and whatnot. Okay, man. So, so we're we're talking about uh, nil, right? Name, image, likeness, right? Mm. Did you did you get a check? For no, I got my check. I got a check. They ain't okay. give me nothing though. Yeah, I got I, three stacks. I didn't, get that. That. I didn't get that much either. But here's the thing: there are <clears throat> the parents everywhere, right? And you just said dads are in the home. It's different for them now. Right. right. By the grace of God, my dad died at a, you know, I was five when my dad died, had an amazing stepdad, um, not even really a stepdad, just a second father. Right. And, you know, still in my life, talk to him every day. He's an amazing guy. But he didn't go to school, right? He wasn't, pre- he wasn't presented with all of these in- incredible opportunities. H- how, how, how are you coaching? Okay, so Titan right now comes to you, mm. right? Where it's 20, how old is he? He's he's five. Okay, is it's it's thirteen years from now. Yeah. Okay. Right. He's eighteen 13. years old. Yeah. He comes to you, and he says, "Daddy, Nike hit me up. Mm-hmm. Reebok hit me up. Mm-hmm. Adidas hit me up. It's uh, and I don't know some other company hit me up. It's a fatal four way, mm-hmm. and all of them are promising something. What do I do? What do I do, Dad?" Well, Titan Dad is very educated. Mom is too. Both are athletes. So we got a different outlook on things. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So. But what are you telling him though? So I'm telling him, let daddy handle this. That's what I'm here for. I'm here to protect you. I'm going to do the, I'm going to get you the best deal I possibly can. So you big baller brand uh, carrier. Yeah. No question. Like I I, I told people before with Lamar, with, uh, with the balls, right? What dad wouldn't be like that if that was their babies? Yeah. So I'm going to be overprotected by mine. Now, the issue is the parent that ain't have nothing. Your stepdad that don't know nothing about that world. He's a very smart man. He's a real estate investor. Right. Yeah, okay. Real estate investor. <laughs> but he don't know nothing about football. Right. Yeah. Okay. And, and they will game you. They can they can manipulate and, and tell you what you want to hear. But you know that little thing you need the magnifying glass for, that fine print? That'll get you anytime. Okay. Every time. So still though, if you if Titan comes to you and you say, "Okay, I'm gonna handle it," Dad is mm-hmm. gonna handle it. What do you do? What do you do now? So uh, what's your next step? You know, you gotta reach out to everyone, every every organization. Um, talk to them. What do you see? Where the future lies? Mm-hmm. What happens if he don't own up to these? What happens if he's not the guy y'all think he is? Mm-hmm. Like, what do we get out of it? Because the way I see it, it's an investment. On certain investments, you can lose. I mean, so it's just like playing. It's like dealing with stock. I ain't guaranteed, right? He can go out there and sprain his toe and never be, never be the same again. Wow. So I'm going to do everything I can to protect my baby. He can be 42. He's still my baby. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, okay. I'm that dad. Yeah. Yeah. And so, and dads are now in the household. Like they, they in there and, and they're demanding they are full throttle, which makes my job easy and makes a lot of other coaches' job very hard because they're so used to dealing with moms and grandmas. Okay. How does that change the dynamic? How do you think it's going to change the dynamic of the NIL and kind of athletes being able to get paid? Um, I, don't, I don't think it's – athletes getting paid is just something new. 
Like nobody really knows. Coaches been used to dealing with moms. When you was recruited, who they talk to? Well, my dad was there, but um, I remember Coach Browse. You know, Coach Clemens, he came and talked to my mom. But the arm around him, right? Yep. All right, love up on mom. I ain't gonna take care of your baby. Now, dad's around. Get your hand from around my wife. <laughs> right, why, are you, why are you talking to my wife so much? Wow, okay. Right? Yeah. And that changes. And that's an, that's an element of recruiting. You're yeah, saying. that's an element of recruiting. And now um, you either got to deal with the dad who's delusional, who think his son is better than what he is, or you deal with the dad that's just straightforward. And you gotta you gotta determine that within a matter of seconds. You how do you, how do you do that? Um, first, I look at I ask the dad where he's from. Right, mom, where they from? Right, and. Most hood parents all react the same, <laughs> right? They do? Uh, How do they look, react? Uh, they love their kid. Yeah. And they looking for any type of bullshit that come out of your mouth. Mm. Your son the best player I ever recruited. Get the fuck out of here. Mm. I had a parent tell me that. Oh, this coach told me that. I told him, coach, get the fuck out of here. I'm like, your son ain't the best I recruited. Mm -mm. I want your son because I can see the future in him. I think he can be this. I could be wrong. But I think you can be this. So and you're just going in the house keeping it real with the past. That, I mean, the the time of being real fits me perfectly because I have a hard time lying. And, and I would lose sleep over lying to a kid. Because you know why? I was that kid, man. Just eyes wide open. Tell me, coach, what can I do? Coach Phillips, say, coach Phillips told me this. He said, uh, you out of word there. You're five foot six. Um, you're fast. Your hands are your hands are big, but they're not that big. Uh, nobody's gonna want you. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, really, coach? I'm I'm killing these cats. They got these offers. He say so. You short. This is Coach Phillips telling me that. Coach telling me that. I was hooked. He say I had that chip. You gotta have a chip on your shoulder, and you prove to everybody in the country that you better than what they thought you were. That sold me. That simple. I tell the dad, you know, um, I'm a kid that I had transferred. I said, your son good, but he don't know, excuse me, he don't know shit about playing receiver. Mm. He don't know this anything is the conversation about it. you have with dad. With dad. He don't know shit about playing receiver. You know what dad told me? Yeah, coach, I agree. <laughs> So it's well received. Is it always well received? No, it's not always well received. It's not. But I told him, I told the dad when I was at uh, my last institution I worked at, I said, uh, your son is a four star, but he's really a two star. <laughs> and he was like, what the, what the <laughs> cluck that mean? And I'm like, no. He's Bro, just, time he just, out. He so, don't have it. So you just, so you, 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 you going to come in my house, Katie. Mm -hmm. You're going to tell, you're going to tell me. Where was your house at? I ain't going to say that again, all right? I'm proud of Katie. I'm proud of Katie. I'm not going to use my boy because I love my boy. That's my man. Right. Well, you know what? For the purpose of the no, conversation. No, no, no. This it's is your my boy. boy. This right. is my boy. You're going to come and tell me AK3 is a two-star athlete mm -hmm. when the rest of the United States says that he's a four. How mm -hmm. do you go in with that unmitigated goal? What school do you go to? He, he, goes, to, he goes to Katie High. It's Katie High, okay. One of the highly recruited schools in the country where most coaches just throw out offers to say I'm good in the school, right? Mm. And if your son played at Worthen, who would he be? That's my thing. I'm like, hey, if I put you over here, would you be the same football player you're over here? Or you just got a bunch of guys doing their job around you that's freeing you up to make these plays? That's insane. So, so man, when I tell you like this, this conversation is one that you got to be prepared for, right? And you, you, it sounds like Coach Phillips, Coach Jason Phillips, when you were getting recruited, mm -hmm. he had the same sort of conversations with your with your mom. But now with the NIL, now there's this new element of now you got to be dad 
and you got to be attorney. You got to be dad and you got to review contracts. And even if you're just hiring someone to do that, you just got to make sure that it's done. That's hard. Coming from my area, you ain't, you ain't, you ain't programmed for that. Like, who, who teaches you that? What teaches you that? Nothing. And, and it's funny, you talk about my recruiting process. I was in charge of everything dealing with that. They couldn't say, hey, uncle going to tell them where to go. Nope. High school coach. Nope. I've been a headstrong individual my whole life. And it's funny. I had my cousin, Casita, tell me that like three days ago. You're just so smart as a little boy. And you you were stuck in your ways. Because I, I can only be me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So if you recruited me, if I'm recruiting me, I have to really figure out who's in charge. And I'm like, man, the kid is. So then my, my emphasis on the kid. Okay, so the kid's in charge, mm -hmm. like you just said, but you got parents in the household. Um, but that's your job as a coach to figure out who is the person who say yeah, nay. Like who's the person between the two parents? Or no. The kid? And Whoever it is. I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't have parents, high school coaches, seven on seven coaches, friends girlfriend who says where he goes. Wow. It's your job to figure it out. So you got to get to the decision maker. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's the decision maker where you put all your eggs in one basket. And it's, and the onus is on them. Yeah. Okay. It, it's, it's, I mean, you know, you got to appeal, you got to appeal the kid, but, um, it's all on who makes the decisions. Okay. And, you know, just to kind of square the circle here, man, um, NIL, mm -hmm. right? You said maybe it's a good thing, right? Right. For Titan, is it a good thing? Maybe. For your boy, is it a good thing? Uh, if you had to answer yes or no, no maybe. Oh, yes, yes no. because I'm, I'm going to be in full control of it. Uh, I could protect them. I read contracts. Um, know what some contracts hold that can be detrimental to them. Uh, and I know, you know, son, if you don't, if you don't do what this contract telling you, you, you should do, you can forget about all this that you have. Wow. 17 years old. All right, bro. So it's a good thing for, for Titan carrier. Because he got me. Because he has, because he has you. Yeah. Okay, so why isn't it a good thing for someone else's kid? For me. No, okay, for you. Right. It's good. Coming from a area where nobody oh, from, really for knows. For Tyron Carrier. Right. right. So why is it not a good thing for you? And if I don't perform the way oh. they think I can, it can all be snatched away from me in one minute. Does he know that? No. Because who educates him on his contract? Mm -hmm. Who educates him on Hey, if you don't do this, this is what happen. Like who who does that? I don't I don't have that around me. Mm -hmm. Who do I hire? My we can't we can't afford a lawyer. Who's gonna do that for me? So it's it's kind of like a non-existent thing for them. Yeah, you know what I, I, mean? I mean like that's that's I mean it's it'll it'll be hard if we're not doing something. Uh, for a parent or anybody that's that's helping that kid make that decision, if we're not educating them on it, then I mean, it's like being in the tenth grade with a ninth grade book, and you pass in the tenth grade. Did you really pass the tenth grade? Wow. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you're not educated on it, then how are you you you're pushing yourself forward? You're really rolling the dice. That's what it sounds That's like. That's all it is. Yeah. And look, I was pretty good at that. <laughs> you're, really rolling, you're really rolling the dice, man, and betting on yourself. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And uh, just putting kids in a place like that, especially being 17, 18, 19 years old, having no life experience. Like, how is that fair? Here, here's the fairness. Uh, we've been doing that for years with these kids getting drafted and making millions. 
right? Now they have the opportunity to make thousands and learn before they make millions. That's the beauty of it. <laughs> That's the beauty of it. That's the beauty of the thing. Okay. You know, but I, 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 and and people, you know, people ask me all the time. You agree with it? You don't. Here's what I agree with. Um, we're we're teaching them. Now some of them gonna get hit over the head the hard way, but now they learn at this young age, and hopefully they go through the bumps, the football depression part, and then they get drafted, and now they know. Man, when I got that hundred thousand dollar deal, I blew it, and I lost the contract because I started feeling myself. Now that I got these millions, I know what it was like to have something and lose it, but now. I got this and I don't want to lose it. What I have to do not to lose it. My goodness gracious. That's the beauty of it. That's insane. And that's a level of um that's a level of professionalism that you're just not prepared for. No. As a uh, collegiate athlete. No you, know, you go from being um someone at, in a collegiate sport. I don't care what I don't care what, what what sport it is, your life is planned for you. You uh, wake up you have you have workouts, then you have treatment, then you have class, then you have study hall, then you have another workout, then you have practice, mm -hmm. then you go to sleep and you do it all over again and every single day. And meetings, mm -hmm. right? Until it's game day. Yeah. So instead of kicking them out into the world that cares nothing about them. I got a question for you. Yeah. Do you remember your last stipend check? <laughs> I, I do so so and for those of you who know what a stipend, stipend check yeah, is yeah I was gonna stop it's all good that. a stipend check is what athletes get monthly monthly to pay for their life essentially right you get you get a stipend check to pay for your life um, I don't remember my last stipend check I just remember how I felt when it was time for me to get my last stipend check mm. and that was only because our coach at the time he made a joke he said <laughs> Couple of you guys about to get your last stipend check. I don't know what you're gonna do now. It was a joke, right? It was a joke. We all laughed, y'all had a good time. Uh, but the reality was, Boom. there was a world on the other side of college football, mm -hmm. and it was gonna slap us across the face. Slap us? It was gonna punch us in the face. It's gonna beat the shit out of us. It was gonna do that. Right. And we had no idea that was gonna happen. And what you're saying, bro, like, I mean, what I'm gathering is that you're saying that the NIL is gonna give these op these athletes an opportunity to experience some of that. Right, in college. In college, okay. So right. they don't go blow it all if they go professional. And you know what they safety net is? The stipend check. Hmm, okay. Cause that's gonna pay for life. That, the stipend check is gonna keep your balance throughout college. Okay. Right? That them bonuses, them signing things, I mean, the, the, the endorsements you're getting is gonna do that. These kids gonna go through that, right? Now it's it's, it's more it's harder than ever to be a coach, right? Yeah. Because now you, you gotta balance a kid that like too. That. You gotta balance a kid that. Makes the kid more money than you. you. Yeah. What do you do? What do you do? You're an NFL coach now. That's what you are. Wow. So now you gotta appease to a kid and make him happy in order to make him mad. Because if you don't perform, he loses his money, and then you lose your job. Right. Right. Okay. Simple. I remember I wanted to be an engineer. In Hello. College. You call me Tata. -ta. You got you to let everybody know. Okay, so. T I mean, you got to let them know now. So Tata. -ta. I mean, you let it out the right, nigga. So like, he grown man. Call another man Tata. -ta. So Tata -ta for now. That's a, that's a nickname that means, hey, I'm out of here. I'm going. It was a, it was a speed. It was a, it was a nickname for speed. Yeah. Okay. Um, bro, I remember I wanted to be an engineer. Mm -hmm. I didn't know what the hell an engineer did. But I remember sitting uh, with my... Um, the person who helps us sort of determine what our career path is going to be. Advisor. And, right, my advisor, mm -hmm. and saying, uh, I want to be an engineer. And he said, uh, this is going to interfere with your practice schedule. Mm -hmm. So with these new NIL rules, like who's the person that says, uh, you can't sign this deal because it could potentially interfere with your practice schedule. Wow. It could interfere with the things that you have going on as an athlete. It could declare you ineligible to play. Like who's reading the fine print? I don't, I can't tell you that. Who uh, should be reading the fine print? I mean, you know, traditionally they'll put it on a position coach. Uh, so now 
I don't know if I have to. I mean, now I I need to know who his girlfriend is. Mm-hmm. You know, I need to know where he's living, who his roommate is, what's the status between him and his parents, and now I need to know who he signed to. Mm. What's the obligations of this contract? Uh, that just you know made the life of a position coach. Um, I mean, it was already hard, uh, about fifty percent more difficult to you know be productive as a X's and O's coach. You know what I mean? So I don't I don't know. Um, I have no idea. Uh, you know, I, I like the likeness, but who's protecting our kids from being screwed over or signing to obligations that will car hires them to do things during time where they should be resting or where they should be studying or when they should be focusing on football or they should have, you know, fun time. You know fun I mean? time? Fun time. You know, what do you mean by that? Friday night <laughs> after a nice win, <laughs> you know, those type of fun times. So it's a... Uh, that's a good question, man. You kind of kind of threw me threw me a little curveball there. I don't, I don't have an answer. <laughs> well, um, so I guess what I, I guess what I'm asking, man, is that well, we always we always talk about this this coach who was the assistant coach, mm-hmm. right? And he was he was the fun uncle that said, "Yeah, yeah, do whatever you want to do. Eat your uncle house. Eat bre- eat pizza for breakfast, mm-hmm. right?" Yeah. And that that posi- that that assistant coach got promoted to head coach. And now he's dad. Mm. And daddy got to say, hey, boy, go sit your behind down somewhere. Hey, what I told you to do. Mm-hmm. Nah, uh, nope, 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 nope. Right. And what I'm saying is it feels like with this whole NIL thing, you're going from here to here as a coach. Now you're having to be not only just an X and o, X's and O's coach, not only having to watch out for what they're doing and who they're around. Now you got to watch out for them on a personal level, man. Hey, don't sign that contract. Business. Yeah. Business level. On a business level. We're not, I mean, we're not, hell, we're not agents. You know what I mean? Um, like one of my, my biggest, my, my guilty things are I literally truly care about and love the guys who play for me. Wow. Because okay. the impact that a coach had on me that loved me and I felt it uh, was amazing. Who was that coach? Uh, I am, I had, Thankfully, I had uh, quite a few in in, uh, in my life. Um, I feel like Coach Sumner loved me. I did. Hey, hey, Tyron. Hey, Tata. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, uh, Coach Phillips for sure. Uh, it was uh, it was no doubt. It, w- it wasn't un- it wasn't question. It was I cried in front of him. I never cried in front of really any man except him. Uh, uh, and Coach Levine also. No, Tony V. Yeah, Tony. Um, those guys, um, I really felt like, you know, they care about me, uh, which, you know, they could, probably could have fooled me and yeah, pretty good at it uh, if they did. But uh, I know for a fact, um, you know, the effect that, you know, it had on me when Coach Sumner left, it, it bothered me. It really messed me up mentally. Uh the effect that uh, Coach Phillips can say, I'm not doing something right. If I couldn't sleep the night before, uh, that's the effect. Uh, Coach Levine saying, yeah, you're good, but you can make, you're trying to be good right at this point when you can be a, a Hall of Famer or when people mention your name, they remember these oh moments. God, I remember that. You know, wow. um, those things stuck with me uh, to now. You know what I mean? But th- that's why I wanted to be a coach. I hated coaches. I really did. I, I didn't like, because I'm like, man, all they do is curse us out. They don't never tell us. <laughs> they, you know what I mean? They don't tell you why they curse you out. Right, they just, just curse you out. And you'd be like, oh, well, hey, 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 what'd I do? And we'd be all like, I don't know, you know? Right. So uh, I promised myself I'd never be that coach. What's your style? I am uh, calm. I am a firecracker, a calm firecracker. 
A cone firecracker. You know how if if you if you get a black cat, and everybody know what black cats is, right? Mm-hmm. Right. It's a black firecracker, like, pop, right. But you put a bunch of them together, they make a lot of noise, right? <laughs> but I'm gonna bunch of them together, but you put a long stream a long stream to it, mm-hmm. and you light it, and you just gotta watch that stream kind of. So it takes me that long to really explode. Gotcha. So with my kids. The receivers used to say, man, coach, you get more excited about me pancaking a guy than scoring a touchdown. And I, had to, I was like, yeah, you're right. Well, what's a pancake? All right, so it's when you put your, your hands on him, right, and you lock into his, his inner breast, all right, and you run him just like this, and you put his back on the ground and you land on top of him. It's called a pancake. Oh, linemen do that, right? So... Uh, I um, I took pride in in teaching receivers that because if I run off the ball a certain way and I put my hands on you and I and I literally manhandle you after that if I'm running a route or if it's a run play now you're on your toes because I don't know if you're gonna run by me or run through me mm. right so I realized that. Unfortunately, I realized that my, my sophomore year, well, actually it was fortunate because I realized it at, a, at an early age, but it, I mean, at an um, early part of my career, that if I push off the ball hard and I, I lean into a guy, that would be, he can't, he can't do anything to me, right? He's, he's in the air. So when, when we talk about, you know, coaches that's having impacts on you, um, I've been at uh, Baylor, I've been at West Virginia and at Houston also. And, you know, my biggest reward is just just not letting them, you know, not my biggest reward is not them going to the league. You know what I mean? It's it's more what are you doing after? My walk ons. I mean, I I literally was watching All American. Anybody watch All American on Netflix? Sure. Right? Um <laughs> Alejandro uh, Marenko. Uh, is, in, is is literally one of the guys he plays Steven uh, Spence uh, doing his action moments mm. running routes catching balls and I'm watching this kid like, before I even know who it was I'm like man that looks familiar long arms one of your guys one of my kids oh wow it was a walk on <laughs> wow right but I take more pride than that than talking about David Seals and Gary Jennings and Sheldon Gibson going to the league and, and Marquez Stevenson and, and Corey Coleman and you know, all these guys that I had drafted. Um, because, you know, it's at a certain point, we're going to all hang them up, right? And we have to prepare our kids to when they hang them up. And I have kids to this day that were walk-ons who still call me. I'm like, man, coach, thank you. I'm doing this now. I'm like, all right, well, what, what I need to do to help you? Well, you need help with this or you... you? And they, they love it, but... That's why I started coaching. And most guys get into it because they, they they get a sense of power when the coach tag is upon you. Well, I felt the power as a as a player. You know what I'm saying? I felt that uh the 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 you know, opposing my will on a person. And even though I'm, you know, I'm a little guy, but you know, I'm I I felt it. Mm-hmm. And as a coach, I want my kids to feel the power of being successful, whether it's, you know, what they're at the time they think their goal is being successful is going to the NFL. I have a kid, <clears throat> uh, B. Wash, who, you know, Bryce Washington, who, you know, have his own car business, you know what I mean? And then he's going into real estate and then he's doing this. And I'm like, He's like, man, coach, man, you got me. You you told me about this and you did this and you showed me this. And I'm like, man, that's why, that's why I do it. You know what I mean? Like, I, I literally want to give the guys that I've coached a lot more than just football sense. A lot more than what I call spotty sense, when you can feel if a guy trying to jam you or if he's going to play off coverage or if he's just disguising something. Yeah. I am what I would have wanted 100% in a coach. And that's the only way I coach. What, what drives that conviction? Like, why? Um, coaches changed my life. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, the locker room changed my life. Um, I, didn't, I didn't understand, 
you know, the importance of a team until I got into sports, especially college. You know what I'm saying? Um, we get into a mindset where, and I think we was the beginning, and we was the beginning part of that era where it was I. You know what I mean? I'm not getting this. You know, I need this in order to get this. Tough, yeah. And it's not our fault. We were just programmed that way. When you say I, I need this, what does that what does that mean? If like, I'm not catching this ball a certain amount of time, then I'm my family not gonna need. Mm. All right. If why well, I got a block, I ain't getting no shine in blocking. I'm a receiver. What am I blocking for? Nah, I need the ball. Throw it up. Let me run by this guy. Throw it up to me. Ah. Ah. If I do this for you, what you gonna do for me? Like, we were the beginning of that era. Ah. And thank God I got a grandfather that's right now 92 years old who just hit me with some stuff to this day that just blows my mind. Right, and he kind of, and he told me this. He's like, boy, I always knew you was going to be a coach. I'm like, Bobo, like, stop. And he told me when I stopped playing, he's like, I'm so happy you done playing. I don't want to see you limping around like Earl Campbell. <laughs> and I'm like, Bobo, I ain't played running back, but you know, all right. And he was right. And he was like, I thought you was going to be a coach. And I wasn't even coaching at the time. And the stars just align the right way to make me become a coach. And he t he literally speaks my future all the time. And the crazy part is he haven't been wrong. You know, this guy hits me with knowledge left and right and just, you know, it's, it gives you goosebumps because it's, it's true. But the, the me being a coach was, you know, it wasn't me. It was just aligned the right way. A lot of people, what, what I call them, uh, prayer warriors. <laughs> you know, the prayer warriors, uh, they uh, they aligned it for me. Okay, and and that makes sense, man. Honestly, <clears throat> there there's a um in life when you're growing up, <clears throat> you uh you see who the leaders are, right? And uh, I don't know, man. I don't think you. In a non-pretentious, authentic way, you'll look around and you'll say, man, wait, there's people looking to me to do things. There's people looking to me to be like an example. Mm -hmm. um, and you never realize it, but people are always watching, mm -hmm. you know? And as a coach, I can imagine the pressure, right, to ensure a young, a young man's mm -hmm. success. Mm -hmm. Right, you, bro, you're responsible for that. You know yeah. what I mean? See, what, what, How do you deal with that? See, what, what a lot of people don't understand, the recruitment of, the, of a kid is based on a coach's future. Okay, um, unpack that. What does that mean? So if I say I want this kid and he's a good player, and he come in, he's a piece of shit, he's not a good person, no work ethic, who that falls on? You, right? Right. It ain't the high school coach. It's not the parents. It's on me. Sheesh. Okay. And a lot of that ends up being you're fired. Now who's going to, this kid ain't going to take care of my family. I mean, this kid ain't going to do that. So as a coach, you have to find different ways to figure this thing out, right? With all the rules now, you don't have as much time to figure a kid out or a parent. You know what I'm saying? So you have to, you have to find different ways. Like one of one of my biggest things, and I'm pr I'm pretty sure now since I'm said, you know, all these coaches that's gonna see it, they're gonna be like, I'm doing that for now. <laughs> all right. So hey, drop drop the nugget, bro. I will pull up to a practice, right? And I wouldn't I wouldn't tell the high school coach that I'm showing up. I wouldn't tell nobody. I just pull up to the practice and I sit in the in the car with my notepad out. And I will pay attention to this kid every move, how he interacts with his teammates. When the coach come over and talk to him, how attentive he is. Um, before practice, how do we warm up? How important this is to him? What time he walk from the building after the bell rings to get to the to to the facility to get ready for practice? Sheesh. Is he the first one or is he the last one? Half of my work was done in my car. And I I tilt my hat on 
not missing. Like, I literally, when I want them and I find out who they are, I have to do it that way to make sure when they ask me or when they say, oh, we don't like this kid, that I can use my, I can use my vertical jump on top of the table and say, y'all, well, y'all talk about standing on the table for a kid. I'm standing on the table for this one. And, you know, if you do things like that, you have to be sure. And I never, I'm one of the guys who don't want to say things uh, that I'm not sure about. I want to make sure I'm always right because I hate being wrong. And when you, when you're in this business, uh, being wrong is, is, uh, I mean, you, you just can't. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, it's just, it's a demanding business. Uh, I mean, everybody says, this many schools, yeah, but uh, the stage that I want to coach on, I got to be damn near perfect. Right. And I strive to be that. So. So, we, we think about this, bro. Like, whose job is it? Based on what you just said, we got this kid that's coming on to a campus. Mm-hmm with a world of opportunities that he he has no idea. We're talking about football specifically, so he has no idea all the opportunities that are at, at his disposal. But there's this different world he has to navigate now, right? He's from Sunnyside, Texas. Yeah. There's a whole another culture of of cornhole and and brunch. And what is that? Well hey. <laughs> That's that was me. Exactly. Yeah. So there's this whole new world. <laughs> of soirees and, and and things that you never knew existed. Mm-hmm. How does he navigate that? And who helps him do that? And who's, whose responsibility is that? If you know right now, Tyron, you came up from Sunnyside, mm-hmm. you see a guy that's coming from Sunnyside, hey man, there's this, this world is about to be crazy to you. How, how are you even approaching that with that kid? It's the same thing that happened for me. Uh, Coach Phillips say, hey, I'm uh, your host, a guy named Andre Kahn from uh, Jacksonville, Florida. <laughs> uh, I don't know if you're going to like him or not because he's from Jacksonville, but uh, wow. um, y'all are two of the same type of people. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's going to show you. He's going to take you around and seduce you to people and you know, once you get here, there'll be a guy you can combine in and and talk with, and you know, he can show you the the ropes around campus even more. And it was that's exactly what it was. It's a coach job to match a kid up with somebody similar. That's not, you know, I don't think you. I'm not saying you wasn't. I, I was super hood. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? You was more of the educated hood. And it taught me how to be a hood educated kid <laughs> when I got there. Hey, you know what cornhole is? That's a thing, is? bro. That's a thing. Yeah. I'd, I'd be like, man, cluck cornhole. What the world? It ain't no sport. Right. It's not a sport. So ESPN is not a sport. Right. Yeah. So, uh, you know, you, you, it's the coach job to match you up with people who, once you touch foot on campus, as far as your roommate, the people you hang around, he kind of can navigate that and control your, your circle. Mm hmm. And that's a part of, of, of being a college coach. Okay. So, bro, well, <clears throat> here's the thing. As a college coach, mm-hmm. you you talk you talk about the anxiety. And let's be real, bro. Like, it, the pressure's not just on these kids. The pressure's not just on uh, the, the, the parents, right? If they really understand the opportunity that's at hand. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the most beautiful things that I've seen is on the Olympics, you know, how they'll cut to the family mm-hmm. and you'll see the mom, the dad, all the kids and everybody's in there and they're all nervous and they're watching and they're like, oh, my God, this is their opportunity. Right. right. That's college football for four years. Right. That's every game on TV for four for four years. If they're not all in one room, they're watching in anticipation and they're like, oh, my God, mm-hmm. this is their opportunity. Right. This is their chance to change our last name for forever. There's an immense pressure on the family, on the kids, on the coaches, and on the coaches' family, mm-hmm. right? We already talked about your wife, Alicia. Mm-hmm. We already talked about Titan, Tatum, 
Tyrone. Mm -hmm. What does that do to the family? What does that do to you as a husband? What is required of a college football coach's wife? Oh, uh, man. Um, you talking about... You just, I mean, you, you're, you're talking about a sacrifice mm -hmm. that's pretty much bigger than what I do as a coach. My wife is literally the pillar of the family. Mm -hmm. Like I have nothing to do really with the upbringing of my sons, right? And you're saying of, as a coach, you don't have the opportunity to have much. I'm not at home. I'm not home like that. Wow. Right. So, you know, one of the hardest things for me, not having a dad, you know, having male male influences, you know, in my life, but it's, it's nothing like having a dad, right? Yep. Um, me not being there, him, uh, hearing Titan say, Man, daddy going to work again? You was only here for a little bit. Like, I'm not built for that, man. You know what I'm saying? I'm not. I'm really not. I, my goal, once I had my kids, me and my brother said this. We was just like, man, who wouldn't want to be a part of this? You know what I'm saying? Like, and this is you. Yeah. Um, but it takes a strong woman to say, hey, I understand you got to raise a lot of other people, kids, but I'm going to help you help get your kids to understand that that daddy is a daddy to not only them, but to a lot of the other young men. And um, I've seen so many coaches marry uh, women who just drop dead gorgeous and really don't care about sports. Uh, and not saying my wife is not drop dead gorgeous because I think she is. Uh, but you, you have to have somebody who understands the business, who who knows the sacrifices that come in hand. Uh, for since May this year, I have been a full time dad, which is the best. Excuse my French, shit is possible. Mm. I fucking love it. Yeah. Man, why, like, why, why you love it so much? Because you can, you can. It, it's kind of hard because you know you hear the parents are like, "Don't live through your kids." <laughs> like I am <laughs> living through them. Really? Like my middle child, for instance, we have a trampoline in the backyard, and he was so determined to just do a backflip, right? So I grab his feet and throw him up, and like he was determined. And when he first nailed it the joy in his eyes, I cried. And like, my wife was like, you good? I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm good. Yeah. But I was missing that. I mean, I missed those moments. And <clears throat> you read, you know, you read these these coaches books and, and whatnot and, you know, you, you hear the coaches talk about how they weren't there and they wish they were. I mean, I had a, I had a um, I don't know if Coach is going to like this or not, but Coach Sumlin, uh, we had a conversation, and he was just like, like, being the head coach, I wasn't there, man, and I regret that. And, you know, he's he's between jobs this year, and he's able to be a dad. And he was like, you still call me Tata. Oh, yeah, he and calls like, you Tata? Tata, like, it's the, it's the best shit ever. And I'm like, yeah. I'm experiencing it. He's like, look at you experiencing now because your boy's going to remember this forever. And you know what's funny? Like now they'll, they'll say, Dad, you remember when we did this? And it'd be like three weeks ago. But I'm I'm creating memories with my boys that if I were on the staff right now, pushing those hours, investing into these young men, I wouldn't have with my kids. That's a tough pill to swallow. So any one of you inspiring coaches out there, it's a sacrifice. You have to you have to give not only you, you have to give your family up in order to be 
fully demoted. You know what's funny? I mean, uh, fully involved, fully committed to, you know, that program. What's funny is that I was watching uh, another podcast and uh, I heard Dion Center say, nope, my coaches be out at this time. And he was like, what? Nah. He was like, look, if a coach in there any longer, he don't want to be home. I want to be home. I got these three younger men who during this crazy time in 2020, I had to explain for the first time that they're a black man, which they never, they don't see color. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, they don't have to. They don't, they don't have to experience like, it. I, I set my oldest, he was like, daddy, why everybody kill black people? Cause they evil? And I'm like, what? And he was like, yeah. Like the guys. This in is the, your boy, this is yeah, Tyron. My, my oldest, Tyron. Yeah. He was like, uh, it's like in the movies, all the villains are, and you know, the villains got the fire coming from behind them. It's always a dark scene. So he think, you know, they killing the, the villains. Yeah. And I say, no, TJ, you black too. Daddy black. Your brother's black. He was like, really? I say, Ooh, let me let me catch myself. Um, I had to literally strip my child of his in, his innocence. You know what I'm saying? Like that is that was that was hard. Um, luckily, these two young ladies that they love don't look like him. Car car and May May. Mm, okay. Car car and May May. Car car and May May. They've been uh, in their life since I was at West Virginia. Okay. And I had to call them over there to talk to them. And like me and my wife left, we came back. And they were good. They were happy playing. And I asked how I go. They was like, it was good. Like, I don't want my kids to see color hmm. but you know we're talking about my my home imagine dealing with these kids who live it yeah you know what they I'm don't have a choice they they have to see which is my other kids the ones that I have to be with the bulk of the day I have to know where they what they at and what they're doing and a lot of kids don't like it but I'm like hey it's a it's a rhyme to the reason bro like I can't, I can't make that phone call to your mama. Like, I don't want that. I didn't, listen, I ain't sign up to bury no kid, right? I didn't sign up to have to make a phone call to a parent. That's just not my MO. I'd be on the phone boohooing worse than a parent is. Sheesh. Because I, you know, I when in the recruiting process, you tell a parent, I'm gonna take care of your baby. Yeah. And then you fail on that? Coach, I thought, Oh, I can't. The only way you know if you got kids. And man, what's what's wild about that is, and what scares me, you know, as a dad is, at some point, you yeah. gotta let your kids go, <clears throat> right? You can be the best dad in the world, Tyra, Andre Khan. You can be the best dad in the world, but if you, if my boy says he wants to go to Howard. And Howard's in Washington, D.C. Yep. I'm not there. I'm not physically there. I mean, I know a couple of people, but there's not much that I can do while he's there. And you can only hope that at some point you raise them well. And with with a man, with three boys, like how much pressure is on those guys? Like your mom is an all-American, you know, a Hall of Fame, North Texas you know, sprinter, hurdler. Please don't say that because right. she's going to like, she hears it, she's going to be <laughs> jumping up and down like, so yeah, I told you. the goat, right? Yeah, I'm just And then, the, and then dad just though, happy. bro, like for real, dad qualified for the Olympics, dad broke records in the NCAA, dad played every game of his career. Mm. How much pressure is on those boys and how do you navigate that as a dad and as a coach? Uh, it's zero. Uh, my boys don't play football. They're not going to play until they beg me. Wait, so they're not going to play football at all? Until they beg me. Why? Because I want them to want it. I don't want them to do it because dad did it. Simple. 
Wow. It's, it's, it's that easy. A lot of coaches, you know, they, they push it on their kids and the kids try to live up to them. No, like, I heard, I heard Frank Gore talk about it. He was like, I ain't forced my kids to do that. He had to, he want, if he wanted, he'd do it. Florida stand up. Shoot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but that was one of my favorite players. Frank Gore? Like, you know, Frank Gore. The U, man, what? Oh, had yeah. his jersey and everything. Really? But, long story short. That was too much for, about Florida right there. Uh, but... <laughs> Um, when I heard him say that, I'm like, right. Like, we try to oppose, you know, this beating on our kids. Like, man, I, my ribs still hurt to this day. I remember that. You know what I'm saying? That like, series, the game, all yeah. those games, yeah. Man, look, uh, if he wanted, he'll do what I did. He'll catch the bus to go run stairs. He'll, he'll get up early to go work out without nobody having to tell him to do it. He has to want it. Like right now, my kids want baseball. Nice. Daddy, let's go practice. And, you know, I'm getting old now. I'm like, boy, it's a thousand degrees outside. <laughs> you think I'm, I'm going around in the dirt in my life? Ah, and shoot. But <clears throat> now, now, they, now they, you know, they, they want it. But the pressure's going to be there, right? If you're not fast, he ain't mine. That's what I told my wife. <laughs> I told my wife, Dad, I say, look, my baby come out, he ain't fast now. We're going to. Uh, well, she was fast at. too, though, man. I mean, what you gonna say? That's to that? my point. That's my point. We both fast, and he ain't fast. I need to talk to Murray. That's hilarious. All right, we call him Murray. All right, that's but uh, that was that's the thing. Like we, don't, I don't want them. To, I don't want them to feel like they have to. I want them to feel like that you trying to you trying to hold me back. Like I want to be great at this. Why aren't you helping me? I'm like, all right, touche. Okay, so they have they gotta beg you. Yeah, they gotta beg me. Okay. If it's up to their mama, they would have been out there already, and everybody be blaming me. Oh, you over there? No, no the, their mom. Shh, they better be athletes. I just tell them I ain't paying for school. You know, I better get it how I did. You know, <laughs> yeah, get it how you live. Yeah. So what drives that, bro? Like, I mean, I I I think I understand you, and um, I. I know why I feel that way, mm-hmm. but why do you feel that way? Why don't you want to put that pressure on your boys, right? Why doesn't, I don't want to compare you to Barack Obama, right? Mm-hmm. But let's just say Barack Obama had had three boys like you. My God, you were the president, right? Mm-hmm. How the hell do those three boys live up to that? For example, my God, you broke NCAA records, right? You became a collegiate coach. You lived your dreams. How the hell do those three boys live up to that? Are you trying to have them not experienced that? Like as as men, do you, are you are you trying to help them choose their struggle? I mean, like, what is it? I want them to know once you commit to something, there's no there's no other alternative. Like you have to go, excuse my French, but balls to the wall. Like if you want to be a fashion designer, it's balls to the wall. Baseball, you, there's there's no. Let's figure this shit out and let's work. There's no there's no shortcut to anything. And I I I, t- I had to tell my oldest this. He's like, Daddy, you you you, uh, you was coach of the year. How do he know that? I don't know. But <laughs> he's like, you was coach of the year. Yeah. I said, yeah. He said, like, yeah, they say you move fast. I say I run fast, I move fast, but I had to get it. Because these little kids, their parents, the kids in this class, their parents talk to their kids about me and say, oh, Coach Carey this. So my son asked me questions, right? So my reply is this. Um, and it, it's a lot of coaches that, that ask me that same question because I'm, I'm kind of getting off topic, but it's, it's just it's just rung a bell right now. Um, man, you moved up in these ranks so fast. All right, and I, I hit him with this. I say, well, have you ever went to sleep starving? And I was like, what? Let me say, have you ever went to sleep hungry? Uh, no. I used to go to sleep with my stomach to my back. And I used to tell myself, I'm gonna go to sleep early so I don't have to, at 10, 11 o'clock, I won't be starving but I'm gonna be hungry at eight or nine, so I'm gonna go to sleep so I can get this free lunch in the morning, I mean, this free breakfast in the morning 
So I'm gonna get to school to time on time. So you talk about sacrifice and what path that I I take to get there. I already got my stripes. I played every game in my career. Broke ribs, whatever. But swine flu, <laughs> uh concussions. Oh uh, you oh you remember the concussions now. Oh, uh, you told me that. I was just going off what you told okay. me. Okay. Well, we gotta talk about that one in Marshall too. But uh um I I've given everything and I was I was never a I was cocky on the field, but never off the field. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't a guy who be, yeah, I, I did this. I couldn't, to this day, I can't recite my numbers to you. All I know is I'm tied in the NCAA, NCAA for kickoff returns. And it's because they made it a, a huge deal. Did, yeah. But I'm number one in a, a couple of them. And I can't tell you, you you mentioned some off to me and I was like, what, hold on, what? Like, seriously, I, I didn't live, I did not live in a world of Just me patting myself on the back. That's how I teach my kids. Like, we're not. Like my, my oldest, Daddy, I hit it all the way to the fence. It bounced off the fence. I said, yeah, you did. What did you do wrong? Because you didn't run full speed to first base because he playing t-ball. Hmm. He was like, yeah, but I got to third. I said, you would have scored if you ran full speed to first base. <laughs> but good job, though, buddy. Right? Gotcha. It was applying pressure, man. Right. Yeah. You you have to because if we don't, when they get in that real world, yeah. they going to, they going to, and they going to just, be, <laughs> you, uh, listen, it's real. It's real. So my job is to protect them from it. You ain't got to live up to daddy. You got to come really close for us to work at it. That's all I ask for is work at it. <laughs> Hot scotch, red light, green light, you got to work at it. <laughs> you, you're going to be the greatest at everything. Paper, rock, scissors, which we all know who's the greatest at that. Oh, that's that's clue me. That's clue me. Uh-huh. Don't show that footage from earlier. Man, <clears throat> Tyron, bro, you, you've had, um, you've had, like, again, such an illustrious career. Um, you've, you've broke records. You've, uh, you've coached collegiately. You've been responsible for all these kids. You've been responsible for your family, raising, you know, three boys. What's been your biggest challenge, man? Like, we know you. We know you sacrificed everything. Mm-hmm. As a professional, what has been your biggest challenge? And do you think that there's something on the horizon? What's on your mind? What are you thinking that may be next for you? My biggest challenge is literally I have a hard time um, not keeping a buck, not keeping it a buck, which is, you know, being completely honest, whether it hurts whoever feelings or not. Why? Why do you struggle with that? Because I hate it. I hate it with a passion to be lied to. I hate it. And, you know, my wife says it all the time. She was like, well, everybody ain't like you. I'm like, why does it hurt to just say it? Like, hey, I can't do this for you. Period. Boom. I'm good with it. Move on. Right? (laughs) Cry a little bit. Wipe yourself off. Get up. Do something else. Right? I get, I get sometimes, you know, put in a position where they want you to to not be you, right? Or to not be me. And what I learned was I can beat around the bush to not make this be not me, right? And that was my way of of doing it. Um, I lied to one kid who's going to be in the NFL this year. Um, 
and I know I did, and he know he did, he know I did, um, but I couldn't sleep for the longest because I saw myself looking at me and looking at me like, bro, I know you lying. <laughs> like, bro, what you doing? Wow, yeah. You can't, you don't even look right lying. You look uncomfortable. What do you do to that? What would you say to him? I told him that the best player would play and the guy who, you know, was here last year and, and put in all his time and his work will get the, he will be the starter until it's taken away from you. Yeah. And it wasn't that. It was literally given to him, the other guy. And I knew it, but I told him that it would be the other way. Which was, uh, you know, and it's crazy. This kid loves me to this day. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, he's like, Coach, you couldn't even hide it. And I was like, yes, I did. You believed it for He's like, yeah, I did. I did, but I, I believed it for a little bit. But, you know, I just I just figured it out, man. I, I, I know, you know, you could be honest with a kid and you can get so much farther. Mm-hmm. Like, seriously, it's, it's that much easier when you're just completely honest. Like, I didn't tell the kid, I'm like, bro, you suck unless you do this, this, and that. And he's like, damn, coach, ain't nobody tell me like that. I'm at his high school. He was like, bet. Nah, he didn't come to where I was going. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's crazy. He ended up going to the other school. Okay. And then after a couple months there, he was like, damn, coach, you was right. He's texting every player on my roster Asking if you got a spot so I can come down because you was right. I can sleep at night with that. I can't sleep at night with just being fake and lying to a kid because I was that kid. You know, and in certain points, you know, you, you have to, you know, make a kid think he's better than what he is. That's not lying. That's giving hope. Mm. It's not lying. We just give him a little bit more hope than what he thought. And I'm okay with that. But when it comes to just, you know, what I told you, I'm not. I will toss and turn. Uh, and I only sleep in one spot because I slept on a couch so long. So my wife be like, you just toss and turn in one spot. So, <laughs> you just roll around yeah, in, just one in one spot. So uh, I'm short, so it's not hard. But um, it's, uh, it's, it's, something, it's something different and new. Um, about what I had to do because I'm just a fuck. I'm sorry. I'm just a realist. Yeah. I can't. I can't. I was like that as a player. You know, I, I, I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna say what I feel because I I speak from the heart and I'm hella passionate about everything I do. Like I have people ask me all the time, man. Don't you want to be a coordinator? Don't you want to be a head coach? I say yeah. But I want to be known as the best to ever coach this position. Period. How can I be known as the best to ever coach this position when I got a bunch of kids who don't believe in what I tell them? What do I do after that? How do I look them in the face? How do I tell their parents that, hey, I got your baby. You the best ever. Don't worry about that. Uh, you know, whatever goes along with that. You know what I'm saying? So I want to be known as the best receiver coach that ever walked this earth. I want to be known as the guy when they talk about receivers that my name is mentioned, period, point blank. So, <clears throat> man, Coach, so what, what's wild is, bro, I'm, I'm be honest with you. I'm honest with you now. And you know I give you a hard time, dog. I don't I don't ever pat you on the back. <laughs> All I do is give you a time. I'm surprised it was this nice this long. Yeah. So come on. <laughs> yeah, I'm a, I'm a, I'll be honest with you, man. Like um, in this, there there are people who, and I'm so glad that you, the world is getting to see who you are now and hear your story because here, in Houston, man, Texas, and some areas on the west on the east coast, you are some areas on the east coast. Bro, you're a celebrity, bro. Like, people know you, right? 
Like there's goat talk with when you're when you're coach of the year, when mm-hmm. you're receivers coach of the year, when they know that you know what you're doing, it's a thing, right? And um, in this conversation right now, you kind of going from Tata to Tyron Carrier, man. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you might be going a little bit from so, this to that. Is I'm all earning, I'm saying. I'm earning your respect. Is that what you're saying? Uh, I ain't say all that. Uh, I'm just saying go. that you you growing up a little bit. All right now. Um, so, so Coach Carrier, yes, sir. This world is a big place, man. Um, and there's a there's a school of thought that I don't necessarily agree with, and mm-hmm. that school of thought is you can only take someone as far as you've gone, right? Um, there's a world where ninety nine point nine percent of the players that you coach are not going to go pro. Mm-hmm. They're not going to be professionals in in the sport that they play. How do you prepare them for life? Well, that's where I hang my hat. That's what makes me what I feel like different because I invest into those guys who I know, and I'm honest with them. I'm like, bro, your chances are low. <sighs> I know you keep it real with the boys like yeah, that? I keep it real with them. That's good. Okay. Call any one of them. They'll tell you. And uh, let's paint this picture. Let's uh, look, look, look. I'm going to say this too. I got an actor. I have a real estate guy, a guy who owns his dealership, a dealership, car dealership. I have guys who works for Fortune 500 companies. And I also have, take a wild guess. What what can be like, just moms be like, oh my God, coach, how did, how did, he, how did he end up doing this after college? Oh man, I don't even, <laughs> bro, I don't even want to say. I don't, hell, I don't know. It what ain't porn. It? Let's just say okay, that. Thank okay, God. thank right. God. He's bro. a stripper. He's a stripper. And honestly, that's where my mind went. I didn't want to say it, dog. Okay. But. Well, he is a stripper, so I got to add that on my, my resume. Jeez. But and he he literally tells his mom, Coach Carrier, taught me how to be. Oh no! Yeah, he just messed with me. Uh, shout out to Ricky, man. Oh That's my, my gosh. boy. Okay, uh, pretty Ricky, what they call him. That's what they call him. They call him pretty Ricky. God dang! But uh, I paint the picture to all my kids, and I'm like, hey man, look, there's a big world out there. What do you want to do? And you know when we start to figure out what we want to do. Right around junior going into senior year, yep, and we like, eh, we kind of just get pushed in that way, right? Like, we thought you was going to be an ESPN analyst. It was no question about it. Yeah. Andre Kahn, <laughs> ESPN analyst. He's going to crack a joke, and then he's going to get spiritual. Yeah. Spiritual. Wow. On him at the same time, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. So, <clears throat> as coaches, you kind of know who you guys are, yep. right? You kind of know what they're going. So I, it's my job to kind of push them in that way and, and say, hey, like I had a kid, like a, uh, uh, Bryce Washington. I was like, Bryce, you're like, you worried about football, bro. You're going to be you gonna be successful in something else other than football. And guess what? Your boy is going to make this money for five years. You're going to make this money for the rest of your life. Tough. So what are you, what are you counting on? Because that's the same thing I did. Like, I made sure that the sacrifices I made was going to benefit me down the line other than now. So I'm giving you the, I'm, I'm going to help you get that opportunity. Tell me what it is that you feeling like you can do. Let me go from now. It's your job as a coach, man. I, I don't know if everybody else worked that way, but that's how I work. So. Man, I'm thinking about what you're saying. And how, I mean, what percentage of, of, of coaches have that on their mind? Zero. Zero. Yeah. So that's not the goal most times. It's not the goal to keep it real with the, with the, with the players. It's more, let's get them on the field, let's keep them eligible no, no, so no. they it, can win it's, games. It's coaches out there. You know, the bulk of the minority coaches always keep it real with the kids. Gotcha. You know what I'm saying? We always keep it real with them. Um, it's, the, uh, it's the fact of telling them that what you think is the future ain't the future. That's tough, man. Man, that's a th- I mean, being an athlete, you know that is a tough pill to swallow. For instance, 
we was talking about me uh, tearing my ACL in a bowl game. It's a thing called, what I call, football depression, right? And it's the fact where your last stipend check hits. And we talked about the stipend check, right? Mine hit. And no source of income. It was supposed to be a draft pick. And all that's gone. I sat in that house. And it was just, I didn't want no light. I just sat there and I was, I was messed up, man. Like thoughts going through my head and, you know, my girlfriend, which is my wife now, was scared. Like, what's wrong with you? Because I'm always, you know me, I was always the lively person, serious, but laughing, cracking jokes type of guy. And, um. I was nothing. I was just basically lifeless. You know what I'm saying? Just depressed, right? And the things that go through your head is serious, you know. And I was contemplating a lot of things, man. It was it was a, a trying time um, in in my life, and people people don't understand, you know, what a college athlete gives to that university um, in the course of four to five years and to have everything pretty much taken away in a play that's a tough pill to swallow especially from from me I mean and I, I always thought I was just mentally physically tough I was jacked up for a while, and it took me a good time to get out of the depression. But if it wasn't from some words that our chaplain told us, which is delayed, it's not denied, I would have been probably contemplating being here or not. It was that serious, man. I was bag under my eyes, rings, I had to go to treatment every day at U of H. Um, it was just not in it mentally, you know. But when everybody see me, I'm like, ta-ta. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. and you put on this, so used to putting on that face of nothing bothering you. But who do you cry out to when everything snapped away? Because nobody knows that but a guy who went through it. You know what I'm saying? That is, that is a pill that was way too big to swallow that I had to literally cut up in pieces and literally listen to like the uh, guys in this world who went through it. Um, and that's, you, you know, the, that situation was the life changing moment uh, for me because I couldn't be macho and I wasn't Superman anymore in my mind that nothing can stop me from playing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And now at this point, I am, I became from the fan favorite, you know, arguably me and Case, uh, to nobody. That's hard. That's hard. And it was tough on, on, on my wife because she had to deal with looking at me lose 15 pounds. And, you know, I was already like 160. <laughs> so, and that was on a wet day. Yeah. So, uh, having to deal with that was just, you know, it was, it was, it, you know, it messed me up. So, well, you know, Coaching-wise, that's why I reach out to all my kids who no longer have eligibility that thought they had that opportunity and it's not there. Those are the ones I'm most concerned about. And I understand. And I'm not just your coach for four years, five years. It's a lifetime, right? Because I still talk to Coach Sumner. I still talk to Jason Phillips. I still talk to Tony Levine. Like, lifetime coaches. Clay Jennings. 
the, those guys, like they they be they like when the stuff happened to me, they they locked in. They like, no, no, that's what we gonna do, right? And I was just a player for him. And it was, it was, you know, with Coach Phillips, a lot of this stuff was happening before I even put on a helmet for him. You know what I'm saying? And he was all in, which made me play through injuries. Coach Sumlin made me, and, and they didn't force me, but they made me say, Coach, I got you. You know what I'm saying? Like, that stuff go a long way. But that's why, that's why I got into coaching, you know, to impact kids like that, like I was impacted. I remember watching uh, one, one of our former head coaches, and he didn't coach me, but I saw how he inspired the, the boys, he inspired the guys. Mm -hmm. And he would clap, and he had a whistle, and he'd blow the whistle, and he's pointing them towards the, the game field, right? And he's mm -hmm. like, go get them. Right, as a player, talk about okay. So there's this whole modern proliferation of mental health. Mm -hmm. Simone Biles pulled herself from certain parts of the Olympics um, so that she could focus more on her mental health. Now, there's a story behind that. They doctor some points because she's the goat in gymnastics, but. Mm -hmm. She said, for my own mental health, let me just sit out. How important is mental health how, as an athlete? How hard is that to say, I'm so good that y'all gonna duck me because I'm so good. <laughs> I'm mentally, I am mentally tapped out at that point. Yeah. Like, I wouldn't matter her. If I was her, I, I was not mad if, at all. If, if I was Simone, I would have said, you know what? I prove what I can do. I'm pulling out. I'm gonna support my teammates. Mm -hmm. Y'all go show them. We still got it. Yeah. Right. And she kind of did it. That's you what she mean? did. She kind of did it. But perfect professional. People don't understand, man. Like, especially gymnastics, man. They give so much of their life to dedicate. And she's 24. She's 24 years old, bro. That's old. For them. Yep. For them. That's yep. old. It's just like football. Yes, yeah, at twenty four, you player. you old. Yeah, like I was talking to DJ Hayden today. He said, "Man, he can't be calling me old school." <laughs> I was like, "Dang, really? how old is DJ Hayden?" DJ thirty. DJ's thirty. Wow. Yeah. yeah, I mean he's old. Yeah, at this yeah, point. At this point, but you know, he was like, "Shoot, I was twenty eight. They were calling me old." You know what I mean, he was supposed to be tapped out really five years ago. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So for her to get told you're Oh, we're going we gonna to make it harder for you because you're too athletic. Where they do that at? Clearly the Olympics. But mental, mentally, she can stand in front of the camera like I did and act like ain't nothing wrong. But when those doors close and those four walls get real tight on you, you got to deal with that. I watched her on, uh, was it the boat? Where they run and they flip and hit the board and fly in there and, and literally she looked lost. And I was like, well, I understand because they just took a bit of your heart and your soul away, your passion and your love for it away. That's hard. You know, I'm in coaching, like, if you take that away from me, that's hard. The, you know, the things that make me me, that's hard. They took away what made her her, what made Simone Bowles the best Olympian of all time. And guess what? Whether she performed or not, she still is. Yep. She still is. So, you, you and, and, and hopefully, you know, and I had the opportunity to meet her when I first came back. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. How was that? She did she? Yeah, she's short as crap. <laughs> like, I was, I was like, you short? She was like, you too. I was like, okay, good. Oh, wow. Yeah, so, I liked it, you know. So, That's dope. but it it was uh, you know, just seeing this little bitty. 
thing that's so powerful and, and made an impact on the world like that. Because she came right out of Gabby, right after Gabby. Mm -hmm. yep. And Gabby made like everything with these box. And then Simone say, uh, let me snatch that. <laughs> that's Gabby Douglas, right? Yeah. And, um, you know, her, her upbringing, which has been brought into light, you know, that plays an effect. So, <clears throat> bro, when I tell you, we look at this whole issue of mental health. Mm -hmm. I believe in it, man. It, it's a thing. It's important. It's true. It's important. It's, it's a thing. But, you know, I was talking to my wife about this. I feel like men don't really have the opportunity to pull themselves away and say, uh, you know what? I need to focus on my mental health. It's not a man thing. Right. And, and I mean, and I, I don't mean this to be like a, you solve a matter of, sex, you know, being a sexist or anything like that. I'm saying that pressure is built for shoulders and not hips. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? That's kind of what my dad used to always say, you know, I know it's 2021, man. And you know, things are different, but, uh, the reality is we don't get to take that side step and say, I just need to think about how I feel. You know what I mean? We don't have an opportunity to think about how we feel. We got to get it. You know what I mean? And as a coach, I mean, bro, your entire career has been like the example of that. I got broken ribs. I can't think about how I feel. I got a sprained ankle. I can't think about how I feel. I, you know, uh, I'm, I've been sucking all week at practice or I, I just don't feel good. I can't think about how I feel. I got to go perform, you know? And what I'm saying is, I think that it's a beautiful thing that we are finally saying, hey, athlete, we see you. Like, I don't know if it's these cameras. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's social media, but we have more exposure to your life and damn, I didn't know you had this kind of pressure on you. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe we should extend you this grace. So they're not, they're not saying shut up and dribble anymore. They're not saying, I mean, look, they're not saying shut up and dribble unless they're refusing to understand. Mm -hmm. Now you see, I'm 24 years old. I'm this little girl. I'm 4'8". And the entire country is looking for me to bring home the goal. Mm. And they're going to dock me 20 points. Mm -hmm. And I got a team full of people that are significantly younger than me that have never been to Olympics. And this may be the only shot. I've been here before. I got countless goals, right? Like the, there's, there's no other athlete that deal with she with, with no. what she dealt with. No, there's no other athlete doing the pandemic, the, the social issues that was going on, uh, doing for gymnasts, the, I don't even want to say his name. I don't even want to give him that much glory. That guy who abused these young women. Oh, wow. Yeah. You know, not only she had that, she was fighting for all gymnasts. She was fighting for this country. She was fighting for the, the issues in this country. And we putting it on four, eight, what'd you say? Four, four eight. Four, eight shoulders. 24 years old, young woman. Little sweet thing, too. She's just nice. She's nice. She's little a southern thing. Just per perfect sweet. professional, man. Yeah, yeah, just nice as you want to be. You want your son to date her. I'm only saying that because I got a number of boys. But yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, you know, that's that's a lot of that's a lot of pressure. I'm, and I'm telling you, man, this mental thing, mental health, uh, we've been taught as black men to hide it. You don't show weakness. And what I've learned, which I still have a problem with, which is showing it, I have, you know, I have m m multiple people, you included, who reached out to me um, within the last two months. I was like, T, you good? And I'm like, yeah, I'm good. And, like, it's still a shot. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's still... still there you know but I'm good though you know what I mean but because I have people who care not about Coach Carrier 
Not about the athlete carrier. But uh, not about Tata. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they really care about me. Right, yeah. So uh, that's what's important to me, period. Friendship. Uh, I, I don't see millionaires commit suicide, mental health. I seen people that's like middle class live happily ever after without all the money. So that's all mental. And and, and you know, check it check your mental every time you go somewhere, <clears throat> every time you put in a situation, always check your mental. If somebody fucking with your mental, excuse me, but somebody fucking with your mental, like change that shit. Don't let them dictate how you feel. That's my motto. It's strong. So that's strong, man. So <clears throat> I know when um I know you were going through some things in your life. Mm -hmm. um, I'll never forget this, man. Your your grandfather told you something, mm -hmm. right? You were you were you were dealing with this issue of essentially mental health, and you thought you were going through something, and your grandfather really gave you some clarity. Like, man, what was that, bro? Let me let me tell you this. So, you know, I'm, I'm gonna let the people know. Uh, my papa called me like, boy, you good? It was like May, end of May, going into June. He's like, you good, boy? I'm like, yeah, Papa, I'm good. I'm just tired. I've been sleeping a lot. He said, oh, shit, you good. Now, those of you who don't know, Papa, Baptist as it come, old school, you know, one he told me two things that blew my mind, right? First of them, he was like, look, before you marry her, you better live with her. Like, you don't know a woman until a year. And I'm like, Papa, you talk about marriage all the time. Don't, don't move in no woman you don't marry. He hit me with that on the side. Hey, you better live with her. You know, so he told me this. He said, um, I told him I was tired. I was sleeping a lot. He said, man, look, when a man's worried, he can't sleep. When he's concerned, he can't eat. He said, you sleeping and eating, son, you good. And I was just like, what? Wow. <laughs> I'm good. I mean, brought me out of the funk so quick. That's crazy, man. And it is so powerful that I get a 92-year-old man that I can speak with about issues he, I mean, now look, I mean, my grandfather didn't seen it all. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? He didn't seen it all. He didn't marched, he didn't did Million Man, Salma, he did all that. That's crazy. You know what I'm saying? So, and he a truck driver. So he was able to drive and hop out and and do what he needs to do, march and, and fight. So, um, you know, you get that wisdom, man, and it kind of it kind of just keep it like, man, I'm tripping about that. Like, <laughs> what am I doing? He like, son, the, the money don't make you happy. You know that, right? And I always knew that. He always told me that. He used to have this little chain console. He'd be like, take as much as you want. It ain't gonna make you happy. Why would he say? And I'm like, what? <laughs> Shoot. <laughs> and then at a certain point, I used to try to take all of it. Then it got to half. And then I was like, eh, I'm just take a dollar. That's all I need. Because I realized having all of it didn't make me happy. Right? So nobody can ever hold money over my head and say, I'm paying you this or I'm doing this for you. You know, with, with anything. Because what makes me happy is the three boys at home. That is my pride and joy. Now, if they, they having a hard time, I ain't, I'm not good. But as long as those three young men will eventually be young men are happy, I'm good. But I am very fortunate to have my grandfather who literally just make big situations seem so simple really quick. You sleeping? Nah, man. I'm just, uh, honestly, bro, like. That's, a, that's, that's big, man. Struggling a little bit, dog. I'll be honest with you, bro, like. <sighs> this is about you. And I'm thinking about all that time ago when Joel Kozer came to me and he said, man, there's this kid from Wortham. And he's the man. And 
we need you to show them good time. Mm. So they said. And seeing like the man that you become, bro. And all the things that you've accomplished. And your family and your career. Mm. <laughs> it's tough, bro. Like honestly, man, like god damn, I can't I can't remember the last time I you know. Yeah, but you 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 knew me before I was uh, what they call professional. Yeah. yeah I, you, I knew the you, I knew the sunny side of Tata. <laughs> that's man. that's the that's the the catch twenty two to this situation, man. That's why, you know, I wanted to come on here with you because yeah. I can feel like me. You know what I'm saying? Um I can talk to you as a brother than other than, you know, trying to be professional. I can open up and get a little bit, you know, a little soft. Oh yeah, man. You know what I mean? Yeah, so we gotta, we gotta let it ride. No, that's one thing. Hey, we talk about mental health all the time, Tyron Carrier. You know, I want you to know, bro, I'm proud of you and yeah. everything that you've accomplished. All right? You've done enough. If you do if you do anything else, it's icing on the cake. It's right. the cherry on top. Yeah. All right? You did it, bro. You did it. You broke all the records. You went and coached. You gave back. Mm. You got your boys. You got your wife. Do what you want to do with your career. Go see Deion Sanders. Be, hey, be on staff if you want. Mm. All I'm telling you, man, is that uh, I'm proud of you, bro. Yeah, Thank well, you for coming to the introspective. Well, podcast. hold on. Before we do that, Colin, we talked about this oh, boy. a while ago about you starting a podcast because you have a way to get some things out of people. Yeah. Um, you have what I think is what I have in coaching is just God pushes that up on you and you can't deny it because it doesn't satisfy you just by doing it. It makes you, it gives you gratification. It gives you a purpose by doing it, yeah. right? So this is what you was called to do. And I've been saying that since college. I said you was going to be on ESPN. Not saying it's not going to happen, but this is this is what I've been seeing you to do for years, you know. Oh hi, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so I mean, th that's that's wow. the the purpose, man. Like we we don't know. In college, you couldn't tell me I was gonna, you know, be a coach. Yeah. In college, I couldn't tell you you was gonna do this. I mean, I mean, you didn't think you was gonna do this. I didn't think I was gonna be a coach. Mm. E.J. Smith, the first person told me I was gonna be a coach. So, summing up, like we're doing a. We're we're actually moving forward in our calling, and you clearly you couldn't deny it. We talked about this back in 2018. Yeah, I remember. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. and it's here. It's it's happening. Mm -hmm. How many people can play like that? How many how many people that God put His hand on and say, "Hey, I'm I'm gonna put you in where you need to be," and it might not be where you thought it should be, but we're gonna get there. Oh yeah, yeah. Take some time, man. Take some time. You know. But we're coming out the gates. Man, look. Coming out the gates, Tyron Carey. Appreciate you. Oh, yeah, absolutely, bro. Cougar Boys for Life. Cougar Boys for Life. Eight. Seven, eight? What is okay. it? I don't know. I don't know. Let's, call Let's call it seven. Let's call it seven, okay? Go. There's so many things um, that you've accomplished, bro. Right. Like, uh, uh, if, if your boys Google Daddy right now, they're going to see all these different things, and they're going to be like, huh? That's my daddy. That's my dad. What's next? It, it, and and if you could leave, if you could leave the the people watching this with anything, what would it be? All right. So what's what's next? As of right now, um, I kind of you know partnered up with a, a couple of cougs uh, in their businesses. Go cougs. Um, uh, sports capers. Um, with my boy Rod, um, where we, you know, we put a basketball court in your backyard, tennis court, whatever, you know, baseball field. We do it all. Anything sports related, and, and you want to have some, some fun. We can, we can, you know, make your dream come true. Um, Doug Kelly with uh, Kelly R and R Roofing. I'm over the commercial side, uh, so got a leak. Let us know. <laughs> we can. Get, <laughs> Nice. We, can, uh, we can come in and fix that for you. Um, and Ready Eddie, um, is, it's it's a company. We basically do just about anything. We're, we're a big pressure washing company. Mm -hmm. uh, but we stripe lines, we paint, we do all that good stuff. Um, anything you, you really need for your big commercial projects, we 
pretty much can do it. You know, so I teamed up with those three guys and uh, who I only do things that I'm passionate about, so I'm with them. But as far as the future for me, I know my calling. My calling is to, to inspire a young man. And there's nothing I think I'm better than, I'm better at doing it than doing that. You know, I, I tried to fight it these, these couple months since I, I haven't been working and it keeps slapping me in the face. Like I get text messages from former players like, Coach, man, you're such, you're so important to me. And I'm like, God, dog, I'm trying to, like, I don't know if I want to do this no more. And they bring me back. You know, I get, you know, parents calling and, and, and high school coaches that I recruited kids from their school and other coaches that I work with, um, coaches that I never came across, you know, that reach out to me and just, you know, pour the love in and saying, hey, um, you know, this is your calling and you're, you're really good at it, you know, because we all have doubts. I mean, I, I, have a, I have a bunch of them as far as this, you know, what I'm doing as a coach uh, because it, it's hard. I mean, so many sacrifices you have to make. Uh, but I know what my calling is, you know, is to be a football coach, whether I'm a coordinator or a head coach, which I will be one day. Um, I am going to inspire and lead young men to not only winning football games, uh, national championships, uh, it's going to be Fortune 500 business owners. You know what I'm saying? Uh, running Fortune 500 companies or business owners. That's um, my goal and my passion as far as being a head football coach. Because we all know football teaches us values that nobody else has. Now, as far as my encouraging words uh, to any high school athlete out there is, um, you know, the things you do in the dark will always come to the light. Uh, you can't cheat the guy, the man in the mirror. You can't cheat him because when you have 10 reps and you do nine, guess who know you did, you did nine? You, right? And you have to deal with that. But I was the guy when I played, I dealt with that guy every day and I didn't let that guy win. So I only know one way to truly be successful and that's doing it that way. So if there's any high school cat out there who feel like they're being overlooked, I'm gonna tell you to look yourself in the mirror and um, <clears throat> count how many reps you, you missed, right? And just because Texas and Texas A&M and Baylor don't want you, just because you're going to be at Sam Houston State or anywhere, the scouts don't, they don't just look at one place. It's their job to look at them all. Trust me, they call me and ask me about kids at other schools all the time. So um, you make sure you leave your stamp on anything you do, which means the only way you can do that is through hard work. So um, I, I see myself being that coach that inspires and, you know, truly, honestly care about the being instead of what the being can do for me. Mm. And I believe that that will carry me a long way. And if it don't, um, at least I can sleep at night because money is not the ultimate thing for me. Happiness is. A strong Tyron Carrier. Hey, man, look, I told you, you came in here and you was Tata. You was Tata. I don't care. I don't care what you, I don't well, care how many records you got, Olympics, I don't care about none, none of that. Look, you might be leaving out of here, Coach Carrier, is all I'm saying. Is the cameras recording? Because this is a thing we used to do in a locker room oh, where boy. I used to take Hun, um name tag on a consistent basis. I was known as the paper, rock, scissors king. All uh, you cougars out there, y'all know what we talking about. All lies. Con's about to take this dub real quick. We ain't doing no sudden. series. Sudden. Just sudden. Sudden right now. On your pace. Okay, here we go. Ready? Here we go. 
get your work. Hey, man. Yeah. Thank you for coming to the Interest no. Podcast. I still love you, boy. If you enjoyed the show, please make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Again, I'm Andre Kahn Jr. with the Introspective Podcast presented by Southern Gents. Aspire to inspire.